triple crown numbers in the league. Only Johnny Coy of Wichita State has more RBI. But champ, this guy leads the league in eight hitting categories. Well, he's got outstanding power to both sides. We saw him take the ball out of the ballpark the other way earlier in this tournament. He's certainly got pull power. Wind's blowing out into right center a little bit. He's a guy that can, uh, can take the ball to any part of the ballpark. They're going to have to be careful with him with the base open. And Black comes inside to him twice and now has the advantage at one ball, two strikes. Saratella has been smoking hot. A 24-game hitting streak. He's had hits in 32 of the last 33 Saluki games. Evans account right there with a fastball. Try to get him off the plate a little bit. Trying to keep Saratella from getting comfortable. Even a 2-2. He stays in there really well. We watched him hit in this tournament. And he's not afraid to hit the fastball any time in the count. Right back at block and a very efficient clean inning to start for the Creighton Blue Jays. Saluki's going over to start our championship game here in the Ozarks. On the line here in Springfield for the Missouri Valley Conference. Let's take a look at Creighton's batting lineup. It's a presentation of Slough Care Orthopedic Sports Medicine Specialist at Slough Hospital. Can keep you in the game. Not impressive season batting averages, but they've been much better in this tournament. And again, doing what they do best, getting guys on and getting the engine started. And this might be the key to the game. Southern Illinois is the worst defensive team in the Valley. This defensive lineup brought to you by Casey's General Store, a convenience store, and a whole lot more. The champ, I want to talk to you about the Southern Illinois defense because to start the tournament, they had a no error game in beating Wichita State 6 to 3, and that got them going on Tuesday. Well, you got a contact pitcher on the mound that pitched very well against Wichita State. They played extreme good defense in that game, 6 to 3. Ken Henderson feels like it maybe was their best game of the year. Brad McEwen leads off for Creighton, but I want to ask you about Cody Forsythe. As good as Ty Block has been, Forsythe has been the same, and he knotted up Creighton during the regular season. Well, perfect through five against Wichita State in game one. And McEwen lines it to right to start the Creighton. Bottom half of the first. The stats very impressive for Cody Forsythe. <laughs> Cody had 15 appearances, three complete games. He's 5-4 in the year with a 2.86, over 100 innings, giving up just 90 hits, walk 29, 81 strikeouts. A command guy, but he's got a plus breaking ball. He can work away, and he's not afraid. He went, like I said, he wins five perfect innings against Wichita State on three days rest Tuesday night. Nick Judkins up now for Creighton. Six of 13 in the tournament. He had a three-for-three three game against Illinois State Wednesday. So hitting 308 for the year. This Creighton team does not have a lot of power. And one of the more interesting stats, they only had one home run in their home ballpark this year. Of course, TD Ameritrade Park, home of the College World Series. If both Judd these pitchers stay on the mound, you're going to see similar style of guys because Block and, and Forsyth, very similar stuff. Mid to upper 80s, like I talked about, both have a breaking ball. They'll show the right hand hitters a change up. Similar styles are both going to try to work fast and work ahead. Throws that one by Judkins. Forsyth had a five-hitter April 21st against Creighton in Carbondale. Tied him up a little bit up and in. 
good fastball in the upper 80s and just couldn't get, Judkins couldn't get his hands extended. He also loves pitching in this ballpark. And strikes out Judkins for the second out. Yeah, it was a breaking ball way. He was able to time up, like I said, came in on his hands on a pitch before, and then there's that sweeping slider that uh, Forsyth will show those left-handers. He was able to take the ball to the strike zone, but just too attractive to lay off of by Judkins. Chance Ross, the Creighton third baseman. Up now, Ross, 4 for 13 in the tournament. Had a home run Wednesday against Illinois State. Goes the other way and lines it to the second baseman, Welch. So both teams go in order to start the game at the end of one here in Springfield. No score. They're two of a kind, and just like toddlers, puppies need food made for them. That's why there's Purina Puppy Chow. With all the essential nutrients your growing puppy needs. Purina Puppy Chow. It's the playoffs. We haven't served a single calorie all season, and we're not serving one now. If you can't handle it, go sell foam fingers in the parking lot. How many calories are you carrying? Zero! How much Pepsi taste? A lot! Now get out there and make me proud. Yeah! Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Hello, I'm Rick Navarre, president of St. Louis-based Peabody Energy. Peabody is the world's largest coal company. Coal is vital to America. It provides half the electricity in the United States. Peabody fuels electricity needs in 21 countries on six continents. And we are a global leader in clean coal solutions, providing affordable energy security and made in America economic stimulus. I invite you to visit us at PeabodyEnergy.com. Who could resist the call of America's number one puppy food brand? with DHA and essential nutrients also found in mother's milk. Purina Puppy Chow. No score here getting things started in Springfield, the championship game of the Missouri Valley Conference Baseball Tournament. Closed captioning for tonight's game made possible by Emerson, the global technology and engineering company. To learn more, visit Emerson.com. Emerson, consider it solved. And one of the better hitters in the Valley now up for Southern Illinois, Jordan Syvertson to face Ty Block. But Syvertson has really struggled in the tournament, just one for 12. And watching Syverson play a couple ball games in this tournament, teams have tried to pound him in. And you take a little risk right there because he's got power. It's only 315 down the left field line, but they're able to tie him up in the inner half of the plate. It's a nice swing on this one. Gerber goes back, but it's gone. So the slump ends for Syverson, second in the league in home runs behind his teammate, Chris Saratella. And Syverson gets a solo home run against Ty Block. Not sure if they were going to try to go in there, but he got a pitch out over the plate a little bit. Syverson stayed through the middle, didn't, didn't try to pull it. Here's the fastball. He sets up a little bit on the inner half. The ball's out of way. Syverson's able to get his hands extended. Ball's carrying a little bit to center field. But that ball was well hit, about 410 feet to straightaway center. SIU takes a quick 1-0 lead. And just a note here, when Creighton does not score first in a game this season, champ, they are 4-19. And, and for Ken Henderson, he wanted his team to jump on top, and they do it with one swing of the bat from Jordan Syvertson. Here's Austin Montgomery, and he also brings power behind Saratella and Syvertson. You see the 329 average, but he's 13 of 26 in his last five games. Tied him up with an off-speed pitch there. He tried to he went aggressively. He was hunting a fastball in that first pitch. Block came back, looked like with a straight change up. Got him out on his front foot, popped it up. Montgomery, only seven RB or home runs, but 55 RBI, so he's certainly a big factor in that offense. And here's the veteran catching Brian Bager. For the Salukis, a career 300 hitter. And this one to short center. Nice diving play by Gerber. 
Good jump on the ball in center field. And again, Creighton, excellent defense at every spot on the diamond. And Bezier right there, Bezier right there, it looks like he got something off speed and a great catch by Mike Gerber coming in right on top of the Valley logo. But they're swinging at the first pitch, and with the wind carrying out, Gerber's got to play a little bit deeper, but he was able to come in and knock that one down. Three first pitch hacks so far this inning by Southern Illinois. And Danny Dushinsky up now for Southern. And that works in your favor sometimes because you're aggressive for a pitcher that's around the plate, but you're also trying to get into their bullpen and block with a low pitch count in the first inning. Has had a, you know, with early swing, you're going to have low pitch innings. And that's one thing that uh, Southern Illinois is not afraid. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to play their style and see what plays out. Dushinsky is seven out of his last 16. And it's down in the count 0 2 to tie block. Dushinsky, a little breaking ball in on his hands. He, he pulled it foul right into Coach Ken Henderson. Now Block's got him 0-2. We'll see what they choose to do here. Looks like they're going to go away. Fastball just up and away. Now we'll look for something maybe soft back in. Bajers only have, has three home runs this year, but one of those was against Block and Carbondale. What does he change up? And he got, kept it down the way to even the count. Dushinsky, a sophomore from Elk Grove, Illinois. Nearly hit for the cycle in that Tuesday win against Wichita State. Tried to pound him in right there, 2-2. He took the pitch. Now he's even the count. Got to look for something out over the plate here a little bit, looks like. Foul territory, the chase is on and out of play. So pretty good at bat here for Donnie Dushinsky. Well, he's forcing him into his seventh or eighth pitch is what Southern Illinois wants to do. They want to try to drive the pitch game. We're only looking for block maybe when you talk to their pitching coach. Uh, with Creighton, they're saying maybe four, possibly five. He had a complete game, nine inning, uh, one hitter on Tuesday. So they're not looking to extend him much past the fourth or fifth inning. Well, everything is on the line tonight in this game for both of these teams. Block through 109 pitches in that Tuesday game, and Ed Service told us yesterday he's just not going to put a kid in peril. Well, I like that. You know, I mean, that's where Ed realizes what he has and, and uh, how important that that is in the future for this guy. Up the middle and leaks into center field. Second hit of the game in the inning for Southern Illinois. Great at bat for Donnie Dushinsky. Well, he took him in the eighth or ninth pitch and he continued to stay up the middle. Looked like a two-seam fastball that he just drove right back over the box. Took a ground over the box head. That good, solid Creighton defense couldn't get to that one. And now light hitting freshman Tanner Renner will come to the plate. Renner hitting just 145 and 0 for his last 12. In fact, his last hit was April the 10th. You know, it was nice, though. Renner the other day really contributed. Got a couple sacrifice punts down and, and did the little things. And, and that's really important when you're maybe not swinging the bat as well offensively or, or statistically, you still have to be able to contribute. He's got the base open. They may try to start the runner right here and see if they can create a little pressure on Creighton. It's a great point, champ. They might not even be in this game without him because those two sack bunts came against that against Missouri State here in that 10 inning win on Thursday night when they won it 3 2. Well, he put him in a perfect spot up the first base line, forced him to, to force you know one bad throw, and, and uh, just the little things like that. So Southern Illinois will sit back and swing the bat, but in that case, they chose to bunt and he got him down. And Block falls behind Renner, two balls and no strikes. And he had Dushinsky. The runner at first going back toward the bag. And now misses ball three. And Anthony Benboom will make the trip to the mound. They don't want to walk a 145 hitter with two outs in the inning. No, they don't. I'm sure. I don't think Hindu's going to give him the green light. He gives a lot of green lights three and over. In this case, I think he's going to want to push the pitch count a little bit, maybe get to that nine hitter, get a man to scoring position, and see if they can get that second run on the board. Especially left on left. i got to think he's looking right here. Dushinsky, just a couple of stolen bases. You may see him run 3-1, but I don't anticipate that he'll try to steal unless they just start to run in, in a 3-1 or 3-2 count. And Dushinsky's not far off the bag anyway, and doesn't seem to have a real good read on Block's move. Takes a little extra step there. The 3-1. And he walked it. 
Just missed on the outer half of the plate with that 3-1 fastball. Here comes their pitching coach, associate head coach Rob Smith to talk to Block. Well, Block usually has great command. Came into the game 76 strikeouts and just 27 walks. Well, he's well aware of this lineup, too. He, he realizes that four or five of these guys in this lineup can leave the ballpark. This ballpark has played small this tournament. The wind's blown out. It's been a very hot tournament. So he's a, maybe a little bit uh, cautious in putting the ball someplace. You don't just attack the strike zone. In their home ballpark in Creighton, a much bigger ballpark where they play the College World Series, you can maybe attack the strike zone. But you have to be a little cautious, I think, now because, you know, one swing of the bat and all of a sudden it's 4 nothing. So you still got to make quality pitches uh, regardless of where you are in the lineup. Which is why I'm curious that he walks Tanner Renner. Yeah, he just missed. He got behind 3-0 and, and then uh, just couldn't make a pitch 3-1. Nice block by Ben Boom to prevent advancement. But well, that is a tough one. That thing's about 55 feet. Came up on him and he kept the runners in, uh, in force out position. Tries to heat up Trajo there and misses. Two balls and no strikes. Rennie Trajo, the ninth place hitter, hitting 307, but just one of 11 in the tournament. He did have three runs scored Wednesday in an extra inning 9 8 win over Bradley. 1 0 Southern Illinois on a solo home run by Jordan Sybertson. Kind of pitched it 2 0 and, and wasn't looking on, which I like. He's trying to be patient. Hindu yells in, just be aggressive on something. In on your hands. Trajo looking for the 22nd RBI of the year in the second run for SIU in this inning. And Block Aitman to even the battle now. Two balls and two strikes. Block, one of the greatest pitchers in Creighton history. And, of course, they have had some great ones, including Bob Gibson. Alan Bennis and others. Block wants to get rid of Trigio right here. He too having a good at bat, fighting off another fastball. Counts to leaving at two and two. We'll see if Block chooses to go to an off-speed pitch. He's gotten some guys out on their front foot with that changeup. We'll see what they look to do. Even count right here, even though he's a nine-hole hitter, he's hitting 307. Flirts with an extra base hit just wide of first base. But Ken Henderson has got to be happy with the at-bats he's getting. Well, the foul balls, you know, lead to pitch counts, and that's something that's a little bit of a factor. This late in the college conference tournament, guys coming back on three days rest, it's going to be about the bullpens. It's going to be able to who can push their starters far enough to stay out of those middle relievers. Might have chased an off-speed pitch there. Count stays two balls and two strikes. And just... Once you get in conference play, these aces are going off a week's rest normally. And both of these guys tonight going on three days rest. Well, and, and they've had rest. Normally there's going to be some kind of throwing a side there or whatever. So you eliminate that when you're pitching on three days rest. You just got to really watch how fast their quality pitches drop off. In this case, he's been around the plate. He's made some good pitches. SIU's just doing a good job of fouling pitches off. And another one sprayed foul by Rennie Trajio out of West Lafayette, Indiana. The Homer Purdue, and of course the Boilermakers have had a great season in the Big Ten. Trajo up on the plate, and again he stays alive. Yeah, try to get a little breaking ball in on his hands right there. Try to tie him up. Looks like a little cut fastball or slider. Just gets in on him a little bit right on his hands. He tries to keep his hands inside, but he fouls it off. Keeps the uh, bat alive. A 30-pitch inning for Ty Block after he had 10 pitches and getting the Salukis out in order in the first. Strikeout ends the inning, but the Salukis are on the board. A solo home run by Jordan Sybertson to the deepest part of the ballpark, and the Salukis are on top.
Brazil reduce its overall reliance on foreign imports with the launch of the country's largest petrochemical operation? When Emerson takes up the challenge, it's never been done before. It simply becomes Consider It Solved. Emerson. Slough Care Sports Medicine at St. Louis University Hospital treats sports injuries such as ACL tears, rotator cuff injuries, and early knee arthritis that often result from the weekend warrior activities of people who exercise occasionally. If you have a sports injury, let our team help you get back in the game. To schedule an appointment at our Midtown or West County offices, call 314-977-4440 or visit slewhospital.com. Where can you get the best milk? From Tom, from Russ, from Laura, and Maggie. It comes from all of us. We're Prairie Farms, and we don't just work for the dairy, we are the dairy. Making sure the dairy products in your child's school, in your stores, and on your table are fresh and healthy. Handled with the kind of care that your family deserves. We are Prairie Farms Dairy. Ask for us, the farmer-owned dairy. Welcome back to Springfield. Tonight's Prairie Farms Missouri Valley Conference Scholar-Athlete is Creighton's Ty Block, the starting pitcher for the Blue Jays, a junior from Centennial, Colorado. 2.39 earned run average. In fact, he leads Creighton all time in ERA, but he's also got a 3.9 in financial analysis. Of course, Creighton, an impeccable academic reputation with the top private universities in America. It's brought to you by the farmer on Prairie Farms family of dairies. Prairie Farms Highland and Roberts Dairies, farm fresh quality from our family to yours. Anthony Bemboon leads off the second for Creighton. one nothing, Southern Illinois. And Creighton has its first hit of the game. As Bemboon goes the other way. Looked like they got a fastball, maybe cut a little bit, and was able just to go with it. You know, the fastball, the cut down and away, just stayed right through it, got the ball by Montgomery at third base. Gets her leadoff man on. We'll see how Ed Service chooses to play it. Thornburg with no home runs, just a 219 hitter, their DH. He also catches when Bim Boom is the DH. But we'll see how Creighton tries, if they're going to try to tie this thing up. Here's the short game we talk about. Even in the five hole hitter, he's going to try to move up Bim Boom and get a man in scoring position and see if they can cash in with some of that timely hitting that they've done so far in this tournament. Creighton with 70 sacrifices this year. I think they've led the world in sacrifices, although Evansville actually had more this year. And pop back, and an easy play for the catcher, Bajer. And I want to ask you about a champ, because when Creighton was struggling, Ed Service told me yesterday, he says, our bunt game was terrible. I mean, they went through a 4-14 stretch, where they didn't have any thought they'd be in this game. And he just said they were a terrible bunting team. Well, and that's part of their game. They try to move guys up and get them in scoring position. The thing is, right now, you fail to get the bunt down. Now you're one pitch away from a double play and you're out of the inning. So instead of getting a man in scoring position with a couple hitters a chance to tie it, now you've got a situation where a ground ball and they could be out of the inning. But they have arguably their hardest hitter coming to the plate right here in Mike Gerber. Sophomore from suburban Chicago and Naperville. Seven for 12 for the tournament with six RBI. He had a career-high four hits against Illinois State Wednesday. This is the guy that they wanted to get going, and they got him going, although he's just 237 for the year. Four home runs and 31 RBIs. Four home runs didn't sound like a lot, but it's the most in this Creighton lineup. Good-looking center fielder defensively. He's had a real nice tournament. Bamboo has three stolen bases for the year at first base. And it's 0-2 now on Mike Gerber. one nothing Southern Illinois on a Jordan Syvertson solo home run. This one swung and foul out of play. Bemboon with a little bit of an aggressive lead against Forsyth, but he also was tricked moving back toward the bag on the delivery by the Saluki left-hander. Forsyth, the first Saluki pitcher in their history to have 100 innings in multiple seasons. Dismissed for the 0-2 fastball off the plate. Yeah. 
Tried to pick the outside corner, but just took it off the edge a little bit too much. Bezier moved out there a little early, but Forsythe hit the glove and just was off the plate. Veteran Tim Catton, our home plate umpire tonight in this Valley Championship game. 1-0 Southern. And up the middle, second hit for Creighton. Bimboom with the play in front of him stays put at second. So now with one out, or two outs rather, Crate or uh, Gerber getting something going here. Yeah, Bezier set up on the outer half a little bit. If you look at that pitch, though, it came back out over the middle of the plate. Gerber did a nice job. Drove the ball right back up the box. Puts runners on first and second. The Staley at the plate. 220 hitter, one home run, 20 RBIs. Creighton's got a runner in scoring position, and they've done an excellent job in this tournament hitting with runners in scoring position. And again, one out in the inning, so runners at first and second. Staley hitting just 220 for the year. And two for nine in the tournament. But already, champ, they've shown more life against Forsythe than they did during that regular season series in Carbondale. Well, they have to be aggressive, too. They know that Forsythe's going to be around the play just like that the Salukis know that Block is, so they've got to look for pitches to hit early in the count. They don't want to get him into a pitcher's count and take a look at that sweeping slider. Good change up just off the edge, evens the count of one. A good plate discipline. Staley thought about it. Kept his hands back nicely. It was an off-speed pitch, but he didn't commit. Staley fouls it back and Forsyth ahead in the count. One thing Creighton has been able to do in this tournament that Ed Service did not, his team didn't get done in the regular season, was runners in scoring position, champ. They're 422. Yeah, they've done an excellent job with, with runners in scoring position. Really struggled early in the year and just felt like that that was something they had to improve on. And he talked about, when I talked to Rob Smith earlier in the, in the day, he said that just the little things like that, they start talking about when they got so far down in the regular season, we have to point to the conference tournament. We have, to, we have to learn to do the little things, the bunning you talked about, the base running. Of course, the defense is going to be there, but the timely hitting, the, the, the hitting with men in scoring position has been a real key, and that's why they're getting a chance to play in this game tonight. Kind of started. They jumped on Nebraska. They beat the Huskers 8-1 to one in front of a big crowd at TD Ameritrade Park as Forsythe just misses inside. Or it is two balls and two strikes, but... The ball in the inner half of the plate. Pounded the fastball in. We'll see what he chooses to do 2-2. Two, two. But that 8-1 win over Nebraska kind of gave Creighton some newfound confidence. Staley fouls off a fastball away. Forsyth and Bezier are on the same page. Bezier calls the game. He's an experienced catcher back there, and he runs the game. The reason they do that, they like to keep the up-tempo. They like to keep the pace going a little bit. So sometimes catchers, when they look into the pitching coach for pitches, it, it lengthens the inning a little bit or drags it. Your defense gets a little sloppy, and they want to keep an up-tempo to help that Saluki defense by keeping the game moving. Great, and with similar at-bats to what Southern Illinois had in the top half of the second. But I got the feeling from Southern champ that they would like Forsythe to go a little longer in this game than maybe Creighton was thinking they were going to go with Block. When you talk to the two pitching coaches, yeah, Forsythe's a the guy. They're thinking 5, 6, 7, and I think Block, they're thinking more 3, 4, 5. So we'll see how all that plays out. These foul balls aren't helping either pitcher, though. Blows it by him. I think it might have been up just a little bit. It was a fastball just above his belt a little bit. He tried to lift it, got underneath, couldn't catch up. Fastball probably mid to upper 80s right there, and he just climbed the ladder on him just enough to get the strikeout from Staley. Brings up Peter, the second baseman. Yeah, hitting just 228 as you look at the catcher, Bezier, the veteran. But this Peter kid has got a great future in front of him, one of the top high school players in Iowa throughout his high school career at Mason City and a very good get for the Creighton program. 
And Peter is a freshman who's been good on the tournament at 5 of 12. He had four hits against Illinois State Thursday night. In fact, he went four for four in that game. But a very good athlete. It's one thing Ed Service does in the Creighton Blue Jay program is recruit athletes, and this Peter kid kind of fits the mold. And he did, and he talked about getting his athletes on base so he can do some things. He can start runners. He can steal bases. He can push bunts. He can just create some action on the bases when he's got good athletes. Peter crowds the plate. He's going to take some of that sweeping breaking ball away from Forsythe. We'll see if he can fight one off and put something in play and tie this game up. Forsythe, great pitch to start ahead of him. No balls in one strike. Forsyth, an All-Valley first team selection in what was a very good year for pitching in this conference. Off speed, Peter tries to go the opposite way, but perfectly placed. Seibert's in there. Creighton leaves two in the second. They trail 1-0 at the end of two. Southern Illinois, the leading hitting team in the Valley, has used a home run to lead one to nothing as we go to the top of the third in the Missouri Valley Conference championship game and an NCAA bid on the line here at Hammonds Field in downtown Springfield, home of the AA Springfield Cardinals. And tie block. The Creighton left-hander again, one of the top players in CU history. Will face the top of the order in Jake Welch. Wells from the Boot Heel area of Missouri. Actually played high school ball at Bernie down in the Boot Heel. Breaking ball off the edge right there. Wells just taking a couple pitches. He hasn't really got He likes the ball in on his hands a little bit. Chance for us, the third baseman from Creighton, showing that he's protecting against the bunt a little bit. But Welch doesn't look like anybody that's going to try to bunt right there. He's very aggressive at the plate for a leadoff hitter. He's got gap power. He's got good foot speed, a couple of home runs. A little bit different type of leadoff hitter because he's got a little pop in his bat to maybe take the ball into the alleys. Scored the winning run in that extra inning win over Bradley. A little cue shot off the... And now a low throw from the third baseman, Ross. And a tough play, a little slow roller off the end of the bat. Yeah, he caught it off the end of the bat, as you're going to see here in the replay. And Ross backed up a little bit with two strikes, caught him on the edge, and Welsh does a good job of getting out of the box. It's a hustle play that he's probably going to beat out anyway. The throw was in the dirt, but it looks like Welsh had it beat along the way. He set his feet a little bit late, ball down in the dirt. Judkins a tough one to pick right there. Ends up losing the handle, and Welch leads off with an infield base hit. Obviously, Missouri State also plays in this park, but a great playing surface. 
here at Hammonds Field. But now Ken Henderson get a chance to uh, get the wheels turning here with the leadoff runner on in the third. A little hit and run action and no double play opportunity. Nothing opportunity for the Blue Jays. So a couple little infield grounders here has got Southern Illinois in business in the third. Well, left on left, you're going to feel like you're going to have to just try to make some contact. He chooses to start the runner, and what that does, that moves Staley back up the middle a little bit, and when he goes back and tries to recover, he has to plant on the backhand and just can't get the handle. I'm not sure he's going to throw Harding out there anyway, and here's Ciratello with a chance to hit with runners in scoring position. Chris is in scoring position when he's at home plate. So he's, he can really swing the bat. Well, maybe the first real critical at bat we've had in this game, even though the top of the third. Two infield singles to start the inning. And now the best hitter in the Valley up there with nobody out. And this is where Southern Illinois can kind of mess with you a little bit with Syverson protecting him behind him. These guys are one and two champ in the Valley in well, home runs. You can't. You can't run from Ciratella here. He, they started him off with a breaking ball. But somewhere in this bat, he's going to get a pitch to hit with uh, Syverson on deck. Double play ball. They got Syverson the ground into the 4-6-3. I'm sorry, Ciratella grounds into the double play. And well done by Ty Block of the Blue Jays. Yeah, a little anxious on the ball. Ties him up in on his hands a little bit. He can't get extended. Slips out of the box, but I don't think he's going to beat the double play ball anyway. But Creighton does such a good job at the pivot. Real nice feed. Easily turns a double play. Chance to keep him out of the big inning. Welch moves up to third base. Syverson, you can be a little careful right here now with the base open. You don't have to pitch to him as aggressively as you might have had to with runners at first and second or bases loaded if Ciratella had reached base. And again, Syverson had come into the game frustrated in the tournament. He struck out five times. In fact, he had the most strikeouts of any hitter in the Valley this year was 60. But he jumped all over the tie block delivery in the second and sent it over the center field wall. Chose to go 1-0 change up right there, so they may try to pitch him backwards and keep him off of this fastball. Montgomery, though, sitting there on deck with seven home runs and 55 RBIs, so it doesn't get a whole lot easier if you do walk Sivers. Good change up again. Again, Block pitching on three days rest. The Creighton staff was hoping to get 12 outs out of him. At least. Tied him up. Be a tough play for the second baseman. Three infield singles and a run scores for Southern Illinois. You know what that is? That's a big power guy with a big swing. When he takes a big swing, it looked like the ball was going to carry. You won't really see the second baseman on this, but the ball got in on him, but he took a big power swing, and the ball just checked up in the air and dropped him. You won't see that very often. That ball drops just in front of second base. Hung up there a long time, but Jake Peter couldn't get He broke back because of the big swing. The ball just dropped in front of him. Southern picks up their second run. Now with two outs, Montgomery hits. Ross is going to go the short way. How about four infield hits for Southern Illinois in this inning? It's the little game Southern Illinois is playing right now. Besides the home run, they're doing a lot of little things right. They start the runner on the hit and run. They get an infield hit there. They drop in the little fly ball to drive in a run. That one takes the third baseman, Chance Ross, deep behind the back. He tries to go for the force out at second. No chance to get the force out. Here comes Ed Service. It is two to nothing, Southern Illinois. Looks like Liska is going to come in the game. Their number two starter. Not sure if they'll make a pitching change right here. And the call to the bullpen. Have they made that move yet? They haven't not necessarily made the hook yet here with two outs in the third. And you know Ed Service is thinking that he's got Liska up as number two. Now this is a situation where he wants to get one more out for sure in this inning and try to take his chances here with this hitter. Well, that's true, and, and I, I still think he wants to get a little bit more out of block. I know he talked about Liska maybe for an inning in this ball game, but I don't think he was looking for him to come in the game in the third inning. I mean, he was hoping that may be the fifth or sixth. 54 pitches for block, but Southern Illinois hits some outstanding at-bats in the last two innings of this game. They have six hits, but in this inning, they have four infield singles. 
You know, and, and they have had four. And Creighton has not played poorly defensively. They just had some tough chances. The ball takes Ross deep to his bare hand side behind the bag. Staley's moving to second base on a hit and run. A big swing by Cyrus, and the ball drops in front of the second baseman. It's just some rare plays that have kept this in line, but still only given up one run. The ability to turn the double play on Saratella has kept them out of a big inning so far. It's still alive. We'll see what Bezier can do here. But so far, their defense, even though it's bending a little bit, it certainly hasn't given up the big inning. Bezier line to center. His first time up. One ball, two strikes to the senior from Oak Forest, Illinois. Block's still making some quality pitches right here. Like you said, he hasn't given up a whole lot other than the home run. But he'd like to just get out of this inning. Creighton can figure out if they're going to send him back in the fourth. The way that uh, Liska's throwing, it doesn't look like he's not going to be in this ball game in the next inning. Like you said, they just want to get through this, it looks like. And Block just can't throw it by him. He's got one strikeout in the inning, and Southern Illinois just keeps fouling pitches off. And Bajor, dangerous. Champ, he's had four extra base hits in this tournament. And a big sacrifice fly to beat Missouri State the other night in extra innings. And a liner, extra base hit up the right field line. The fifth of the tournament for Bajor. It is a two RBI double. And the Southern Illinois Salukis lead four to nothing. You look at this pitch when we see the replay, but it looked like a fastball that just got up, up out of the plate. Bezier did a nice job of just staying with it, kept it fair down the right field line. Southern picks up two more runs, takes a 4 lead with two outs. And Donnie Dashinsky comes up. They've signaled that Lisk is ready. Seven hits already a for Southern Illinois. Swing and a miss by Donnie Dushinsky, who singled his first time up. And this is very similar, champ, to what Southern Illinois did to Gene Stevenson. On Tuesday, they jumped ahead of Wichita State. Wichita rallied, then they got a couple of home runs late to put the Shockers down in the first game of this tournament. But they swung the bats very well early and got a nice lead on Wichita State to start the tournament. You know, what that does, that allows your pitcher, Cody Forsythe, to challenge some hitters a little bit because it's got some margin for error, and that could also help him take him deeper in the game. And Dushinsky doing what the rest of this lineup is doing. Just wasting pitches from Ty Block. we got a free-swinging ball club with some power, but they're still able to do a nice job with two strikes. And that's a rare combination and a, a good job so far by SIU tonight. And they've done it on most of the tournament. Here it is again. You know, they're balanced hitters, even though they're powerful. When you look at them, they've got kind of a wide base. A lot of these hitters hit with the same approach. But... With two strikes, you can spread out a little bit and still show some power. Your power maybe the other way like Bezier did. He sort of fought off a pitch and hit a double in the right field. But he was able to fight off some pitches until he got something that he was able to keep fair. Little change of speed. Right back to block. Southern Illinois has gone in the third, but damage done. Four runs on five hits for the Salukis. They lead it 4 nothing. And one of the best things about State Farm is our accessibility. Oh, yeah? You can call us 24-7, get quotes online, start a claim with our smartphone app. You name it, we're here anytime, anywhere. Any way you want it. That's the way I need it. Any way you want it. All night. All night. Every night. Any way you want it. That's the way I need it. We just had ourselves a little journey moment there. Yep. Saw him in 83 in Fresno. The place was crawling with chicks. I gotta go. Any way you want it. It's the way you need it. We use the new Raleigh's bat with the BB Core standard. It's the bat that the players want to use. They got to have great balance. They got to have the feel, the handle, the grip, the performance of the bat, and how far they can hit a ball, and how hard they can hit a ball. And Rawlings has hit the mark in all those areas. The players felt that Rawlings was a, a step ahead of the class. Rawlings made a commitment to get their aluminum bat at the top of the charts in college baseball, and that's where they are right now. 
Hey, Skip, is that a new glove? No, nah, this is an infill glove. Smaller basket, easy transfers. And this, this one's for cookies. Car wash, jousting, road work, falconing, story time, and this one jotties. Catch great kids promos all weekend long at Ritz kickoff to summer weekend, June 8th through the 10th against the Indians. Mitch Holtis back with Kirk Champion, Missouri Valley Conference Championship in Springfield, Missouri. Let's take a look at our Missouri Valley Conference regular season standings. A presentation of Purina Dog Chow. Long live your dog. This league's impressive in the fact it's sixth, I believe, in the nation RPI. But the balance in this league, Creighton won this league last year. They won this tournament last year, and yet they found themselves in eighth place during the regular season. Well, this whole pro, you look at the facilities in this league have improved. You look at the coaches in this league have improved. You've got guys that are they're getting depth on their pitching mounds. Everybody's got a couple of starters now. It's just that one Friday night guy anymore. You're starting to see programs, two and three starters deep, and it's showing up in the RPI. It's showing up around the country that, that uh, the Missouri Valley Conference is well represented. Certainly a multiple uh, team bid, I think, coming up this year. And Brennan Murphy, Forsythe hangs one for him. And Murphy sends this one to the right field wall. And a leadoff double to start Creighton in the third, down by four runs. And Murphy stays hot. He was hitting 461 his last nine games prior to this double. It looked like a breaking ball that just stayed out over the middle of the plate. Not the big sweeping put away breaking ball, more of a, a try to get ahead breaking ball, 0 and 0. And he just left it in the middle of the plate. Nine hole hitter Murphy pulls the ball down the line for a leadoff double. See if Creighton can answer and see if Southern can find a way to put up that zero to keep the momentum in their dugout. But Creighton's going to look to get on the board and try to get something turned around for their offense. And Champa, when I ask you if this changes Ed Service and the way he's thinking, being down four to nothing here in the bottom of three is McEwen aggressive and fouls it back. The fact that they're four and 19 when they don't score first. This is only the second time in the entire tournament that Creighton has even trailed in a game. And I'm not trying to outthink Ed Service, but this game's one nothing, two nothing. I think we may still play for a run to keep it close. Saratella came in thinking he may try to push one right here, but he was certainly swinging the bat. They've got to look for a way to move the runner and also drive him in at the same time. Floated towards short center. Trigio is there. First out in the third. Trigio got a good jump on that right there. The ball was in. It looked like it was going to die, but the wind's blowing a little bit out the left center. That ball carried all the way. But he had a good read the whole way. Keeps the runner at second base. They weren't able to move the runner up and try to get on the board with a ground ball or a fly ball, so it's still going to take a base hit right here. Judkins at the plate. Unusually warm in Springfield on this Memorial Day weekend. I mean, it was hot. It felt like a late August afternoon. And Nate Judkins is up for the Blue Jays. Struck out against Forsyth back in the first. Four runs on seven hits. Although Southern Illinois has four infield hits. Of their seven, Creighton has three hits. And left two on in the second. Southern chooses to play deep on the right side of the infield. Welch is back, Saratella is back on the pull side, but the shortstop continues to hold the runner a little bit close. Don't think he's going to steal with the left-hand hitter that played Montgomery in a little bit on the uh, infield grass. Creighton this year, 8-12 and 12 against left-handed starters and against Forsyth. Had complete control against him in Carbondale. It's a tough play here, but the center fielder again, Traggio, makes a second play of the inning. Another good jump. That ball looked like it had a chance to drop out there in no man's land. Welch went back hard, but knew he couldn't get to it. But Traggio did a real nice job. Actually was able to set his feet a little bit, keep the runner at second base. And now it's going to take a two-out RBI from Chance Ross to get Southern Illinois on the board, or uh, Creighton on the board. I mentioned the last half inning how Creighton has been so good lately in runners in scoring position. But in this game right now, 0 for 4 in that category. And it's up to Chance Ross to try to plate Brennan Murphy, who had a leadoff double against Cody Forsythe. 288 hitter, 30 RBIs on the air. He does have some power, three home runs. Wind continues to blow out a little bit. You mentioned facilities in this league. This, of course, just a spectacular place for Keith Gutton and Missouri State to play, sharing it with the Springfield Cardinals. 
But Creighton's ballpark, of course, home of the College World Series. We were there last year. That's a, that's a major league park, essentially, in downtown Omaha. Well, Wichita State's ballpark has held up over the years. They do a great job there on their campus. Illinois State's upgraded their facility. Southern Illinois is going to break out some plans middle of this week to improve Abe Martin Field to put a new stadium in some field turf. So that, that's certainly improving. But, no, this is a great place for our players in this league to get a chance to play. And I know it's a great city to come to. Springfield's been awesome the last few days for us. And, and uh, what a great facility. And I know it's nice for the Cardinals to have their double-A team here and their triple-A team in Memphis. Ooh, tough hop for the shortstop, Dushinsky. And Creighton's going to get its first run of the game. So Chance Ross with a base hit and an RBI for the Blue Jays. And although it was moving toward the glove side for Dushinsky, this thing takes a wicked hop. Yeah, it does. Right on the edge of the grass, and you'll see right just past the grass, and the ball just kicks straight up in the air. Dushinsky didn't have any kind of a chance. You'll see it here just in front of the bag. Kicks up. Keeps the inning alive. Ross got a bad hop single right there. Creighton gets on the board. It's oh, There's still three runs down, but that starts to turn a little momentum back to where Creighton feels like, you know, they're still in this ball game. Four hits now for the Blue Jays. And, Champ, you're right. Creighton needed some oxygen. And they get it. And now Bem Boom is up. He singled against Forsyth in the second inning to lead off the second. Chance Ross at first base, 14 stolen bases. He's been thrown out five times, and even though down four to one, who knows? Well, you'll see what Ed chooses to do right here. It's tough with the left-hander, but he may pick a breaking ball or something and start him and try to, to see if he can buy himself a, a stolen base and get a man in scoring position. Ben Boom just can't change his approach with two strikes now. He's just got to keep trying to fight pitches off and find a hole. Forsyth certainly respect him. Held the ball there a little bit longer. He's thinking that they could possibly run in this situation. A little unorthodox maybe with the left-hand hitter. Middle of the lineup, the hole open at first base. But in Creighton's case, they're going to try to make a few things happen. They do the whole tournament, or they have the whole tournament. They do most of the time is try to create things, and then that timely hit comes up big for him. Ross. That is a great read by a base runner right there. That's a breaking ball down. But as soon as the ball went down in the dirt, you're going to see him not hesitate. He breaks for the bag. An aggressive style. It's a little slider out on the plate, right out in front of the catcher, Bezier. He comes up. Watch Ross and see how he moves. As soon as the ball goes in the dirt, he didn't hesitate. And that's a play you work on in practice. As you see the ball down, you see breaking ball count, you see a breaking ball in the dirt, you've got to be ready to move up. Takes the force out of way, puts the runner in scoring position. Excellent base running right there by Chance Ross. They're going to call it a wild pitch, and Ross moves up. But also a great slide by Ross. A little slide slide, but his hand staying on the bag. Bajor actually made a pretty good recovery on he the He sure play. did. He kept the ball in front of him, but was unable to come up and make a strong enough throw. When you block, you got to widen out right there, and you can't get your feet set to make a powerful throw. This one lifted to left. Seibert's in there. Forsyth gets rid of Creighton, shows some emotion, but the Blue Jays get on the board. 4-1 Southern Illinois, a trip to the NCAA tournament on the line tonight. Cardinals fans, we invite you to join us at Home Plate this season. We want thousands in Cardinals Nation to make a pledge to Homers for Health. Each time a Cardinal player hits a home run, we will all make a contribution to SSM Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center to help cure kids. Pledge forms are available at all Deerberg stores. Yes, Big dramatic walk-off homer runs should cost double. Centene Charitable Foundation will match your pledge to Homers for Health, powered by Peabody and you. Pledge at Glennon.org. I know a thing or two about walk-offs. Like this? Don't walk off. The online store at NBC-Sports.com is the number one stop to get Missouri Valley Conference merchandise. With thousands of items, you'll find all the NBC gear you need in one place. You'll find the best selection, great customer service, and fast three-day shipping for only $4.99. You'll also get an easy and enjoyable experience designed to help you find exactly what you're looking for. So if you want the best place to get Missouri Valley Conference gear, head to the online store at NBC-Sports.com. 
The Comfort Inn sets the standard by providing exceptional accommodations and services to business and leisure travelers. Conveniently located off Highway 65, the Comfort Inn is only minutes from tourist attractions like the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame and just a 30-minute drive from the city of Branson. All rooms come with free high-speed internet access and a hot comfort sunshine breakfast buffet. Free airport transportation, a heated outdoor pool, hot tub, and an exercise room are just some of the Comfort Inn's amenities. The Comfort Inn Springfield, 3370 East Battlefield, located near the Battlefield Mall. We go to the top of the fourth, but Creighton's going to make a pitching change. Our call to the bullpen brought to you by Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center, where love for kids keeps on growing. This is the number two starter for Creighton now. It is Shane Liska, a senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Actually, he's going to graduate school at Creighton. He played at Xavier and has been uh, decent in that two-hole this year for the Blue Jays. Yeah, 18 appearances. He's 2-4 and four on the year with a 3.49, 49 innings pitched, 38 hits, 20 walks, 52 strikeouts. Worked over 90 pitches just two days ago. When you talk to Rob Smith before the ball game about Liska in this game, they thought they were hoping they could get deeper so they could avoid him. I know he's a senior right hander. He wants in this game, but you're probably looking one to two innings max out of him. Sun goes down for Ty Block tonight. The Creighton starter, three innings, gave up four runs all earned and seven hits. Although in his defense, four of those seven hits for Southern Illinois infield hits. And now an excellent bunt by the leadoff hitter, Renner. Tanner Renner gets his first hit since April the 10th. Well, he got a couple sacrifice bunts down, but this one he took with him. Just past the pitcher in the seam. First baseman a little bit deep right there, Judkins. Just a perfect spot. If the pitcher doesn't make that play and make a little shovel, there's nobody else that can handle that. He gets a leadoff on a little bit of Creighton Blue Jay baseball from the uh, Salukis right there, but the right guy in that situation now, if, if he chooses to bunt Trajio, or we'll see how Hindu plays it. He doesn't like to bunt a lot. He lets him swing. 307 hitter, 21 RBIs. We'll see how Coach Henderson chooses to play it right here with his nine-hole right-hander. He is squaring. And Trajio with a good bunt. Liska makes the play at first, but well done by Rennie Trajio. He just sets the bat right there, pushes the bunt on the first base side. Liska fields the bunt, a little underhand toss, but he's able to move the runner up. The Salukis have a runner in scoring position. And, you know, in this situation, you just want to keep the separation now. That's what helps your bullpen is your offense because you can extend the pitcher maybe one more inning if you can keep that three, four run separation. And Ken Henderson would love to just get back the run that Creighton was able to get in the bottom of the third. And Southern Illinois has just been spectacular at the plate in this game with their plate discipline. And just working the Creighton pitchers over. Liska getting a good strikeout to walk ratio. But Liska decided to come to Creighton. He's in the graduate school of negotiation and dispute resolution. I think that he's probably there right now. Little dispute resolution here is he's got to cover first. Two outs for Southern Illinois in the top of the fourth. Let's go to our SSM, Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center Specialty Awards. Our love for kids just keeps on growing. At Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center, the player of the year in the league, the catcher for Indiana State, Jeremy Lucas. Nick Petrie, outstanding at Missouri State. He's going to be on your chart somewhere. And the Dan Callahan Award, named after the late Dan Callahan, the former coach at Southern Illinois, Rick Heller. Indiana State, congratulations to the Sycamores. They won the regular season by a half game in champ. It was the first time the Sycamores had won the league since 1985. Yeah, they've done a great job, that program. We've got a lot of their players in our system, so I certainly know a lot about that Indiana State program. Rick Heller, very good friends of Dan Callahan, too, and, and I'm sure that's a special award for him. Two outs now as Brock Harding is up. For the Sycamores. We'll talk more about Dan Callahan and his impact on this league and on this Southern Illinois program. Passing away in November of 2010. This now gets away from Ben Boom, the catcher, and a wild pitch by Liska, and there's the run that Southern Illinois wanted back. Well, they got it right back. Creighton unable to put up that zero to keep the momentum in their dugout. Looked like maybe a little slider right there. It was a curveball, a 12 to 6 curveball. That's tough right there because when the breaking ball's on that side of the plate, it's tough to, to keep it in front of you. And the Salukis out Creighton. Creighton, they get a leadoff bunt 
A 1-3 sacrifice, a 3-1 ground out, and a wild pitch and to so get the run back. Right, so far little things have, have worked in SIU's favor. And a solid shot, but right to the shortstop as Staley makes the move to his glove side. But Southern gets the run back. The Salukis, thinking about polishing a trophy, they lead it 5-1. Southern Illinois leading here 4-1. to Let's take a look at our All-Valley team brought to you by Pepsi Max, official soft drink of the Missouri Valley Conference. Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. I'd like to take this lineup to the NCAA tournament, <laughs> kind of take an all-star team. Stamets, the great defender. Madrano, great four-year career. And the pitching we talked about in the league this year was very, very good in the Valley. Well, every every team in the league, were, like I said, two or three deep this year. And, you know, Missouri State's always done a great job with their pitching, but Southern Illinois is deeper than they've been. I know Indiana State's got some quality pitching. Ed's got to be real pleased the way his pitching's gone the second half of the season. And Cody Forsythe, who's going to wiggle off the hook a couple times. He's given up one run on four hits. Faces Scott Thornburg to start the fourth. Thornburg, a nice swing, but wide and foul. Again, this is not a power hitting team at all for Creighton. You know, last year they had Trevor Adams in the four spot. He was he was kind of the guy they could rely on, a big RBI guy, had some pop. And Ed talked about his uh, leadership too. He says, you can replace numbers, but you can't replace people. But this is a Creighton team that does not have that guy in their lineup this year. No, they don't have that guy that can, um, you know, extra power numbers at all. But he was a, a quality player, you know, in the outfield. But he was a quality person. Doug, they talked about his leadership quality. And that's what you get sometimes. You keep a player in your program two, three, four years, you're going to get that type of uh, leadership. And Thornburg gets caught looking by Forsythe. Third strikeout for the Southern Illinois Ace. Hey, with Niles Media Group goes on the road. These hotel properties, the home away from home. Please call these hotels this summer. Might have youth sports teams, vacations. Visit the websites of these properties when following your favorite team away from home. Here in Springfield, you see the Comfort Inn, the second one down. They're in a great location. If you're going to Branson this summer, they're right there off 65 Highway. You can do a Springfield-Branson combo, and it is a great place to stay. And now, trying to get an extra base. It's safe at second base on a great swing by Mike Gerber, who stays hot for Creighton. And then Renner struggled with this thing in right field. He got a breaking ball. He pulled down the right field line, but he's looking the whole time. He rounds the bag, keeps his eye on the right fielder. When he bobbles it just enough, he continues to go towards second base and beat out. He's looking right at him. The relay just underneath. Creighton's going to run her once again in scoring position, this time with one out. Brings up Staley at the plate, the shortstop. Gerber now two for two, and that is a hit, a single and an error on the right fielder, Renner. And you kind of wonder what Southern Illinois' dugout is thinking with Cody Forsythe and P.J. Finnegan, the pitching coach, and 
kind of what's in the back of their strategic mind with Cody Forsythe. Well, I, I know they're thinking, like we talked earlier, five, six, seven innings. And with the separation now, still at four runs, you can pitch backwards a little bit, hopefully get some low-pitch innings out of them if you're a Saluki. But uh, it's just a matter of staying out of the big inning. You know, he, even if this run scores here, he's got to try to get this hitter out, hits him with a fastball in. Creighton trying to get a little big inning going. But you've got the double play in order, and that's what they got to try to do is minimize their pitches, make stuff happen early in the count. Chance to face the left-hander, Peter, right here. He's got to be looking to find something that he can get Peter to put on the ground. But Forsythe has made very few mistakes in the first three and a third, but he makes his first there by plunking. P.J. Finnegan making a trip right here just to try to calm this thing down a little bit, maybe check and see how he feels, if he's still able to make his pitches. He's going to talk to Bezier as much as he's going to talk to uh, Forsythe, the, the veteran catcher right there. How's the quality of his stuff? Are you getting what you want out of him? And you have a 5-1 lead, so don't be afraid to maybe challenge a hit or two. Now, all of a sudden, with two on, it's a little bit different. Well, and you're at the bottom of the lineup, so you need to challenge right now. You don't want to get back on the top with McEwen and Judkins, and all of a sudden you look up, and there's Chance Ross you know, in a situation this inning, and, and Creighton looking for that big inning. They've gotten a timely hitting so far in this tournament. We'll see if Creighton can pull it off right here. Southern in double play depth. Saratella deep at first. Montgomery chooses to play in on the bag at third base. And Southern has struggled defensively. We started the telecast by telling you they are last in the conference in airs. In fact, 20-some more than the seventh-place team. Eight teams in this league play baseball, and that's in the dirt. So now he's hit a guy and thrown one in the dirt in his last two deliveries. And Peter, even though he hits eight in the lineup and just 228 for the year, has five hits in the tournament and had a pretty good swing his last time up. He lined out to the opposite field, his first at bat. Well, he's got the eight, nine hitters at the plate coming up, and you've got left-hand hitters. He's got to say to himself, i got to make him put the ball in play right here. I can't get him in a hitter's count where I've got to throw a fastball, and they can cheat a little bit on me. He's still in good position if he makes some quality pitches, but Creighton's looking to break this thing with a little gap or something get him right back in the game. Just off the edge with a fastball. Now he's 2-0. Peter's got the hitter's count that he's looking for, and even though he's down in the lineup, he becomes a better hitter because he's bought himself a fastball count. Go fastball away. Not the strike with it. Yeah, ran in on him a little bit, but he uh, looks like he set up away. Forsyth has not walked anybody yet. He did hit Staley. And again, Forsyth outstanding this year, coming into the game with 81 strikeouts and just 29 walks. Double play opportunity for Southern Illinois. Can Dushinsky turn it? No. Yeah, good read right there. That was a breaking ball that uh, Peter rolled over just a little bit. Second baseman Welch just made sure he caught the handle, kept the force out. Good job by Dushinsky. He didn't choose to make the force to throw at first base. He just turned after he touched the bag and looked to see if the runner at third base rounded too far. Nine hole left hand hitter up. Saratella is going to have to hold the runner at first base, which is going to give him some room if he gets a chance to pull it through the hole. So here's Creighton again now. An early critical situation down 5-1. And Brennan Murphy, the ninth place hitter up, and he's had the best swing of the bat that Creighton's had in this game. He ripped the double up the line his first time up and scored the only Creighton run. He's got some room on that right side, but Siratella having to hold the runner on. Blue Jays, one out of seven with runners in scoring position in this game. This is kind of a big out in this game because can they get through this, these base runners and put up a zero, or can Creighton come once again right back and score and keep themselves in this game? And Forsyth approaching 60 pitches. Great swing up the middle. And an RBI single for Brennan Murphy, the left-hander two of two against the left-handed ace of the Salukis, Cody Forsyth. Well, it's timely hitting for a couple reasons because he's got men at third base, but he's keeping the momentum back. All of a sudden, Creighton Luger feels that energy again. They got a little bit of life, and he took the ball right back up the middle. Even though he had the hole at first base, he didn't try to pull a pitch that was out over the plate. Now we're going to start to get a little bit of action in that Saluki bullpen. And back to the top of the order for Creighton and Brad McEwen. McEwen is lined out to the right fielder and flow out to center field. 
McEwen, an Omaha kid, played at Millard South High School, sophomore. Omaha has great high school and youth baseball. And he's been aggressive, champ. He's been hacking away in this game. Uh, 262, just one home run and 18 RBIs. Wind blowing out, like I said, the ball's carried a little bit and start to carry a little bit to the left. It's only 315 down the line. One swing of the bat, and this is a tie ball game. He's got an open stance, something in on him. If he can keep it fair, he's got a chance to put some numbers on the board. McEwen just 2 for 12 in his career against Southern Illinois. Forsyth knocks him up. It looked like a called strike. A little bit of a check swing there, but I think the ball caught the inner half of the plate. It's like a little cut fastball just at the belt. Back and Forsyth get the out pitch with runners at first and second and two outs. And Southern leading by three runs. Dazier set up on the inner half of the plate as long as he could and just shifted late in that pitch. He tried to miss... Try to get something in the outer half of the plate. Just missed down. McEwen riding a 12-game hitting streak. It's the longest of any Blue Jay this season. And the Jays need a hit here in the worst way. Down three runs. Excellent effort by Saratella, but just by his glove. And McEwen lives to hit. Once again, another one with big swings. It looked like a break him in on his hands and ball just didn't carry. Saratella with a great effort, but he was playing deep with uh, two outs and two strikes and was un unable to come up with it. Aaron Snyder is up in the Southern Illinois bullpen. The Southern now is doing to Forsyth what the Salukis hitter did to the starter tie block of Creighton, and that is work his pitch count and extend at bats. Got under this one. High fly to the left fielder. Seibertz and Camp Sundrick. Creighton leaves two, but they get one back. At the end of four in the Valley Championship game, it's 5-2 Southern Illinois. They sacrifice, they protect, they answer the call at all times. They are the men and women of our armed forces and their will, heart, dedication, and service to the country that we call home is nothing less than extraordinary. Return the favor. Text the word return to 90999 now for your $10 donation or simply visit returnthefavor.org. Please join us in returning the favor. I remember the sense of uncertainty as I stood on the curb of Schneider Hall. But with time, uncertainty faded to confidence, confidence to curiosity. I have since lived in Italy, Ireland, Korea, and Newfoundland. I have written stories about places and people I never could have imagined. For me, SIU is less an institution than a genesis. It's that place where the world first unveiled itself and welcomed me in. 5-2 Southern Illinois in the top half of the fifth here in the Valley Championship. And Creighton goes to the pin again. This is Chase Webb. He's been a busy guy throughout the year. This is his 30th appearance. The call to the bullpen brought to you by Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center, where our love for kids just keeps on growing. And he has kind of been that midweek, middle relief extender guy. You see the ERA is good, champ. Struck out 34 and walked 20. Creighton needs him now to keep this thing close. Yeah, it's a senior right-hand pitcher, four-seam fastball, 87 and 90, a tight little slider. We'll show a change up to some of these left-hand hitters, but uh, been a reliable guy for him. So Creighton goes with their one and two starters. As Shane Liska throws an inning for him, which is kind of in their script. And Webb now will face the Valley's best hitter. Starts him off with something soft away. You know, this may be a situation where Webb now has to look to two innings. Not sure how they'll piece this together, but somebody's going to have to make up the inning the block lost. Chris Saratella. Oh, 
Beautiful sinker off the plate right there. Saratello 0 for 2. He grounded out to the first baseman his first time up and then rolled into a 4-6-3 double play. Leads the Valley in eight hitting categories. And he was headed for the 3-30 sign with that swing. You know, four-seam fastball there up in the zone a little bit, probably in the upper 80s. Saratello just couldn't catch up to it. Working on a 24-game hitting streak. That's second in Southern Illinois history. Kevin Koski has the record. Hitting 36 games here. in 2006. Lands on the berm in the opposite field. Long chase by McEwen, the Creighton left fielder. It's a time of night right now, just in between. It's a little bit of a tough sky. Sarah Tellis, champ, he missed all of last year with a wrist injury. He was drafted by the Kansas City Royals. He played in the Prospect League in the summer, kind of the, in the Illinois and Indiana area. Good league in the summer. And kind of got a roll, and he's just been spectacular this year. Ooh, he chases one there. So Saratella a little too aggressive. Strikes out swing. Let's take a look at our list of tournament champions brought to you by State Farm for Auto Home and Life and Banking. Get a better state, get to a better state. Find an agent or get a quote at statefarm.com. Of course, Wichita State went on a roll where they won this thing like 10 years in a row. Since then, it's been very competitive. And Creighton trying to win it back to back. Wichita State's been a little bit of a third straight year that they've not made it to the NCAA tournament unless they get an at-large bid. And that has not happened since they brought the sport back in the late 70s. A little cut fastball right there, a change up the ball cut away from Cyberson. Two for two with a solo home run and a single, two RBIs, a couple of runs scored. Webb a little pop here, now he's Strikes out Saratella and works ahead of Syverson. Yeah, another breaking ball right there. He's got confidence around the play with his breaking stuff right now. Big swing and a miss, and so he strikes out the two biggest hitters in Southern's lineup back to back here to start the fifth. A little breaking ball in the inner half of the plate, but he took it out of the strike zone over the plate. Syverson couldn't lay off of it. Big swing. Second punch out in the inning. Webb is a senior. He played at Cali Community College in the Jayhawk League. And he's got experience in this tournament. In fact, they won it last year in Omaha. And one of the big reasons, he had a three and a third outstanding outing against Missouri State. They had to work their way through after a loss and fought their way all the way back to the championship game, which they won at their home ballpark. But Webb was a big part of that champ. So he has pitched in this situation before. Well, he's got a couple different ways to get people out. He's got enough of a fastball that he can challenge with a four-seamer, but he's also thrown the change up in the dirt to get Saratella, the uh, slider down the, you know, down the way to get Syverston. So he's got some options. Veteran guy has been on the mound. He, he's working fast and just going right after these sleeky hitters. And now he gets ahead of Montgomery. And is a zero right here enough to get some momentum in that crate? And they're only three runs down, and... Like I said, do the little things. They've been getting a timely hitting. They've scored double-digit runs in two of the three games in this tournament, so they're certainly not done offensively. And he strikes out the side. Great job by Webb for the Creighton Blue Jays as the middle of the guts of the order strikes out in order in the fifth for Southern Illinois. Yeah, I'm married. Doesn't matter. You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. Virtually any kind of food waste into an unending source of electrical power for a city? When Emerson takes up the challenge, it's never been done before, simply becomes consider it solved. Emerson. 
In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's General Store, a convenience store and a whole lot more. Right now, you can get a large made-from-scratch taco pizza for just $13.99. Mitch Holtis back with Kirk Champion here in Springfield, Missouri, 5 2, Southern Illinois. Stacy Callahan, the wife of the late coach Dan Callahan, of course, one of the real heartbreaking stories in this league. And there with Keith Gutton, the Missouri State coach. Kirk, you knew Dan so well. Um, the Southern Illinois head coach died from a very rare form of melanoma, died in November of 2010 after a long illness. But to see Stacy here at this ballpark, Southern in this game, a lot of emotion. But Dan Callahan was a great baseball man and an even better man-man. Well, he was. he was. He was one of those guys, and, and I've known Danny a long time. I knew him when he was a graduate assistant. It was nice to see Stacy and Lexi drive over from Carbondale today. But Dan was one of those guys, and Keith Gutton is as tough of the competitor there is. Keith Gutton would go after the game and have dinner with Dan Callahan. And I'm not sure he would after a loss or a win. Anybody else in the league because he's so competitive. But, but he was just one of those guys, when Danny passed away, so many of these coaches either contributed to their fund or made the trip for the celebration at Abe Martin Field that night and touched so many lives all over the country. And you know, Stacy put some money back in the program. She still cares. She still tracks what's going on. She knows a lot of these players are players that Dan recruited. And it's just important to her still. A walk starts the fifth for Creighton, so now Forsythe starting to struggle a little bit. He hit a batter in the fourth and now has a leadoff walk to start the fifth. Go back to Stacy and Dan Callahan, though, and Keith Gutton, fitting that he was there walking with her, the Missouri State coach. He led the charge to have the coach of the year every year from now on named after Dan Callahan. Well, he was in this league a long time, and Keith Gutton knows what, how hard he had to work to keep that program afloat, the fundraising, the efforts to, to keep the program going, to keep it where it is so they got a chance to grow. Finally going to get that new stadium built in Carbondale, and that was so important to Dan to keep that project pushing, and, and Itchy Jones, the former coach, and just so many people involved. But Dan, he was a great guy for this league. He was a wonderful person. He was a good friend. I got a chance to spend some time with him towards the end there, and and uh, he's certainly missed and talked about a lot. There'll be things pop up all over baseball, all over the country, and somebody will bring Cal's name up. Or, you know, just so many people, so many lives that he touched. And yeah, just one final part of the story. This year's Coach of the Year. The Dan Callahan Coach of the Year was Indiana State Coach Rick Heller. And Rick was one of the last people to see Cal alive. Yeah, Stacy even mentioned that today, that Rick drove over from Terre Haute to spend time, drove over to see them in, in Carterville that night. And uh, it was a touching moment right there when you mentioned that. I didn't realize that. But, uh, but it's nice to see Rick Heller win that award. Certainly deserving regardless, but uh, even more so that it's named after Cal. And no one wanted to see Northern Iowa drop baseball. Rick had that program taken out from under his feet. Absolutely. And Cal, I'm sure, would be proud that Rick won the award this year, that his team is in this game, although now Cody Forsythe is struggling. He walked the leadoff hitter, Nick Judkins. He has fallen behind Chance Ross, three balls and no strikes. And this is not like Cody Forsythe. He comes right back, throws a 3-0 pitch right there for a strike. He's also on three days rest. Regardless, this is uncharted territory for him. Even though he felt strong, he didn't have a lot of stressful innings in that Wichita State game. But he had five perfect innings to start the game. But he's got to get through the middle of the lineup, maybe turn the lineup or get through the, the back end of this lineup. We'll see what he does. Comes up an off-speed pitch. Ross fouls it off. This is a big pitch for him right now. He's got to get him. It's an action pitch. I don't think they'll start the runner right here with the left-handed pitcher. Four-hole hitter on deck. But this is a big pitch in a ball game for Forsyth and the Salukis. The tying run is on deck. You know, they're looking for a big inning. They've gotten the big innings in this tournament. They're certainly looking for one here. He's right at 70 pitches. He threw 109 against Wichita State. And a chopper by the third baseman, Montgomery. And into left field. And Creighton now has got things moving here in the fifth inning. Ed chose to start the runner Judkins right there on that pitch and a little high chopper that got over Montgomery's glove. Montgomery looked off and don't think he could have made the play either way, but he sort of looked because the runner was, was heading to second base. Here comes Ken Henderson, and usually when he makes a trip, it's to change pitchers. Well, they get four full innings out of Forsyth. 
And now we'll see what his middle relief can do. Again, if you joined us late, this tournament has been crazy from the first game. And a call to the bullpen brought to you by Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center, where love for kids keeps on growing. As Aaron Snyder coming into the game for Southern Illinois to try to preserve a 5-2 lead for the Salukis. We'll see if Creighton can work on this rally. Cardinals fans, we invite you to join us at Home Plate this season. We want thousands in Cardinals Nation to make a pledge to Homers for Health. Each time a Cardinal player hits a home run, we will all make a contribution to SSM Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center to help cure kids. Pledge forms are available at all Deerberg stores. Big dramatic walk-off home run should cost double. Centene Charitable Foundation will match your pledge to Homers for Health, powered by Peabody and you. Pledge at Glennon.org. I know a thing or two about walk-offs. Like this? Don't walk off. Mitch Hiltz is back with Kirk Champion, championship game of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. And Aaron Snyder into the game here, champ. For Ken Henderson, he's coming in with a three-run lead. Is Snyder a sophomore right-hander? He's got a fastball that can get up in the upper 80s, possibly touch 90. But he's a guy that's going to throw a lot of off-speed pitches. 25 appearances, 1-4 and four record, 4.5 ERA, 40 innings, pitched 44 hits, just 29 strikeouts in those 40 innings. But they're going to look for a little stopgap right here. They're going to try to get a few innings out of him and try to keep Southern to where they can get to the back end of the bullpen where they want to be. When you start talking about... Eaton and those guys, you know, you want to get to them. You kind of piece this together. Somebody's going to have to do it now because Forsyth was unable to get deep enough into the game compared to where they thought they wanted to be. One of these, uh, well, this move might be a little bit opponent specific. Snyder, maybe his best outing or one of his best was against Creighton in Carbondale in that sweep by the Salukis over the Blue Jays on April 22nd. He went two and a third in that game. He faced nine hitters and struck out three. You mentioned he didn't have a high strikeout total. But he got three of the nine to strike out in that game against Creighton. Yeah, and he's a guy, if he's, you know, two, three innings right here would be perfect for the Salukis. But right now they've got a jam to get out of first, runners on first and second, and nobody out. A left hand hitting four hole hitter at the plate. So we'll see what uh, Creighton can do. They're once again looking for that timely hit, that big hit to, to get a multiple running. They put a couple single runs on the board, but they've got a tying run at the plate with nobody out in the bottom of the fifth. Judkins walked to start the inning. Chance Ross with a ground ball single to left. Runners at first and second. Ben Boone is one for two. Single in the second. And flew out to left in the third. And works him inside. Bim Boom has had some big hits. He's had three triples in his last 12 games. He's had four for the season. But lifts this one to center. Traggio loses the ball. Loses the ball in the lights. And the door gets thrown wide open for Creighton. That thing was landed just a couple feet, champ, to the left of Traggio's glove. We talked about it last thing. It's just that time of night where the lights haven't quite taken full effect. The ball goes up in their gray sky, and Traggio just loses it. He eventually just stands there and had no idea where the baseball was. He was squared up to it, saw it early, and then all of a sudden he lost it and couldn't find it. The outfielders, his right and left fielder, didn't get there quick enough. Not that they could have caught the ball, but there's that break that maybe Creighton's looking for. That puts runners on second third, the tying run at second with nobody out. Traggio looked like he was tracking that ball all the way. And that's the tough part. Of that. that happens in baseball all the time. You start playing night baseball, and there's just that one little 20-minute window some nights with the clouds that it's just tough to see. And you got to stay on it. you got to really work at tracking the ball all the way through the hitting zone. And Bam Boom gets an RBI. And Creighton is now got the go-ahead run at the plate and nobody out in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Snyder made a good pitch. It was a changeup, and he got him out on the front foot, got the fly ball, probably could have kept the runner at first and double play in order, and now all of a sudden Creighton's got a chance to tie with a base hit. Thornburg, who tried to bunt and foul out to the catcher, his first time up, struck out looking in the fourth, and now he's down 1-2 to Aaron Snyder of Southern Illinois. 
with nobody out and runners in scoring position in the bottom half of the fifth. Thornburg had all three of his hits in this tournament Thursday in a 10-3 win over Illinois State that eliminated the Redbirds. And here Ed Service just asks him to get in and play, which he does. And the throw is on the tag. They got him. Excellent play by Saratella. Again, Southern Illinois has been adventurous this year with infield defense. But it is still an RBI ground out by Scott Thornburg. And Saratella does a great job to prevent an error. He certainly did. Deshinsky caught the baseball, took that extra stutter step right there, and then got underneath his throw, made the high throw first. But Saratella stayed calm, caught the baseball, knew right to make the tag. And picked up the first out of the inning. The runner was unable to advance the third base with one out because of where the ball was hit to short. Now it's a 5-4 game. Snyder trying to minimize the damage. Creighton looking to tie this thing back up and they got a tough hitter in Mike Gerber at the plate. And we can close Forsyth's evening, but he gets charged with four earned runs and Creighton is within. A run at 5-4 and back to manageable. What's the call here? They, Gerber was saying he got hit by the pitch, and the home plate umpire, Tim Catton, is going to bring him back. Aaron Snyder gives his opinion. Yeah, it didn't come down. It was a ball in the dirt. No, it, it went right over the top of his foot. <laughs> I like the fact that he's trying to get the lead run on, though. Good job right there. But Gerber did not endear himself. To anybody here, the pitcher, catcher, or the home plate umpire. Just one guy thought it hit him. It was Gerber. <laughs> Gerber's got two hits. An RBI and a run scored. And again, he has just been on fire. Nine hits in the tournament and 14 plate appearances. And Bajor now wants to get on the same page with the runner at second base. Well, they do, and I'm not sure you're seeing the signs. One of the things that happened, we're not still out of that tough sky situation for a little bit, but I'm not sure you're seeing the signs right there because they're trying to figure out. He looked in and he kind of shook his head like he couldn't see the pitch. But how about Trajo? He tracks that fly ball double all the way, and the ball lands just to his left, just a couple feet. Yeah, just past him. It's tough. It's a tough thing if you, you can't stay with it all the way. They're just a part where... It, 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 you see it happen a lot this time of night. Just missed down and in there. Drove the fastball pretty well. 2-0 count now. Gerber in the hitting count. Gerber hitting with confidence. Talking with Ed Service yesterday. He said, you know, Trevor Adams helped him. Gerber didn't always like the help in his freshman year from the veteran. But Gerber, with some confidence back, Gets a good swing on this one, but retreating all the way to the wall. Syverson. Syverson did a real nice job there, and I'll tell you why. Because of the tough sky, he had to go back. He had to find the track. He had to find the fence, get a feel for where it was, but didn't have the luxury of taking his eye off the ball and then going back and get it, which you'll see in the daylight or you'll see later tonight. He had to keep his eye on the ball the whole way. A much tougher chance on that fly out than you may think because it's difficult when you start to feel that grass turn into gravel and that warning track, you know you're getting close to that fence. And Bemboom stayed at second. It stays in scoring position and now the Creighton inning is up to Alex Staley, who's 0 for 2. Struck out in the second, grounded out. I'm sorry, he was hit by a pitch. He's 0 for 1. He was retired on a 4-3 fielder's choice. And another chance for Syvertson fighting the sky. And there, but Creighton is within a run. They use a fly ball double. They get two runs scored in the bottom of the fifth. It is 5-4 Southern Illinois headed to the sixth.
5-4, Southern Illinois, but Creighton gets a fly ball double and a couple runs in the bottom of the fifth. Tonight's State and Valley History brought to you by the St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau. On this date in 2007, Andrew Small hit a walk-off double in the bottom of the 12th to give Creighton its first State Farm Valley Tournament crown. Remember that night here, a 10-9 victory over Wichita State in this ballpark. For your next trip to the Show Me State, go to historicstcharles.com or call 800-366-2427. And, Champ, that was a big moment for Creighton's program because that kind of put them in another category. Ed Service had brought them back, got them the NCAA tournament, beat Wichita State in that game in a one-run game. And since then, Creighton, even though they finished last this year in the league, there's just a different feeling about the Blue Jay program. Well, they do a lot of things right, there's no question. Bezier, then once again, it looks like another double. Pulled that one down the third baseline. But yeah, what you're talking about is Creighton. He's, he's been able to, you know, he's taken these programs that we're going to be as sound offensively as we can. Looks like a breaking ball that Bezier gets on the inner half of the plate, just gets it down the line past Ross, kicks around the corner. Bezier with that leadoff double. And Webb, who was spectacular in striking out the guts of the order for Southern Illinois in the fifth. Bezier's had a heck of a game now. Two out of three with two doubles. And that is six extra base hits for Bezier in the tournament. Dushinsky, you know, they, they run the inside move right there just to see if possibly he's going to show bunt. I think Hindu's going to let him swing the bat. He's got his eight, nine hitters behind him. I don't think he's looking to move a runner and play for a sack fly or a, a ground ball at the infield in. Dushinsky flails with that one, swinging away. Five runs on nine hits for Southern. They had, they have one air. So move the runner to third. So a decent piece of hitting. No bunt here from Dushinsky, but the same effect, getting the runner to third with just one out of the inning. Well, Creighton's going to bunt a little bit more up and down the lineup, but uh, Coach Henderson just feels like his style of player, the players he has, and Dushinsky has six home runs, over 30 RBIs. I mean, he's going to let him swing the bat. But with two strikes, or I'm sorry, with the strike on him, he was able to put the ball and play the other way. Now it forces Creighton to bring the infield in to face Tanner Renner, the left-handed hitter, who drug, had a drag bunt for a base hit earlier. And again, that was his first hit, champ, since April the 10th. Looks like Winkleman starting to throw the left-hander down in the Creighton bullpen. Early to squeeze, top of six, five, four. Nah, left hand, he's going to let him swing. And this is one where Webb needs to come right after this kid, hitting 145 with that bunt single. And Tanner doesn't have to look to pull here. He can go the other way and still pick up a sack fly and pick up this run. Creighton continues to have the infield in. Judkins a little bit deeper at first base, and you'll get that pull side because the ball, it's kind of a fast track here on this infield, and the ball's going to get him. This has been hot and dry the whole tournament, so the infield's a little bit fast, so you can play a little bit deeper when you're playing the infield in. And Renner lines one. An RBI single for Tanner Renner. And some unexpected production champ from the eighth spot of the lineup in this game. 6-4, Southern Illinois. Got an eight-hole hitter hitting about a dollar forty right there, and he stayed right through the middle. Did a great job and and stung the baseball and picked up that RBI and and got a run back. They may not get two, but they, they there's that separation now. It's a technically a two to nothing game. SIU in the top of the sixth, and you have to think that way when you're putting your bullpen together. What well, it's not in six to four, but it's two to nothing. And you know where's that separation and what do you have to do? And uh, just a nice job by uh, Renner right there. And Rennie Traggio up now for Southern. Struck out on the second and had a sack bunt his last time up and a nice bunt up the third base line. Tough play. They throw behind the runner and they get him. An alert play by the first baseman, Judkins. And a freshman mistake by Tanner Renner. And Creighton gets out of the inning, but Southern gets a run. The Salukis lead it 6-4, to four, headed to the bottom of the sixth. We use the new Raleigh's bat with the BB core standard. It's the bat that the players want to use. They got to have great balance. They got to have the feel, the handle. 
the grip, the performance of the bat, and how far they can hit a ball and how hard they can hit a ball. And Rawlings has hit the mark in all those areas. The players felt that Rawlings was a, a step ahead of the class. Rawlings made a commitment to get their aluminum bat at the top of the charts in college baseball, and uh, that's where they are right now. Slucare Sports Medicine at St. Louis University Hospital has a tip for your weekend races. Pay attention to your feet. When preparing for exercise, never wear new shoes on race day. Dress appropriately for the weather. Running affects your back, muscles, legs, neck, and feet. If you receive an injury during work or play, contact our comprehensive rehabilitation services to get you back in the game. To schedule an appointment at our Midtown or West County offices, call 314-977-4440 or visit sluhospital.com. Where can you get the best milk? From Tom, from Russ, from Laura, and Maggie. It comes from all of us. We're Prairie Farms, and we don't just work for the dairy, we are the dairy. Making sure the dairy products in your child's school, in your stores, and on your table are fresh and healthy. Handled with the kind of care that your family deserves. We are Prairie Farms Dairy. Ask for us, the farmer-owned dairy. Back in Springfield, a big game here. The winner goes to the NCAA tournament, but little things can win or lose this game. What about the play here by Creighton? Well, Ross crashes and makes a nice play to get the bun and throws Judkins, and all of a sudden Judkins just immediately comes up to throw to second base. He knows that Renner might be turning. He threw it, got the tag down, and a big double play to end in the play. Watch Renner, just a little bit too aggressive on the turn. So you see Ross come in, he kept his feet up and made a strong throw, and right away Judkins come up looking to throw right in behind him. See, head up right away, sees the runner, strong throw, gets the tag in, double play. And in Renner's defense, he's excited because he had an RBI line drive single. Yeah, right. You know, it's so funny about this game. You feel so good about getting the big RBI. <laughs> you feel so bad about getting thrown behind and getting doubled off on a uh, on a bunt play. But uh, that's what makes it great. Renner from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Mike Lansing, great player in this league at Wichita State out of Wyoming. Oh, big swing here. And a foul ball by just a couple of feet on a great swing by Jake Peter of Creighton. Didn't quite get it on the head of the bat, but as he pulled it, you were just wondering if it was going to be enough and if it was going to stay fair. See the ball just turns at the last second, just at the base of the fence, four or five feet from at least hitting the foul line and getting Creighton a leadoff double. Now he's got a one-two pitch to fight off. Snyder's in a position to put him away. Peter's going to try to fight it off and get on base and start another rally and put up another run for Creighton. Twice in this ball game, Southern has failed to put up a zero after they scored. Creighton's done such a good job in this tournament getting their leadoff guys on base, as we talked about, 10 out of 26 times in this tournament coming into this ball game. They did it in the third and scored, fifth and scored. When you do the little things right, that's really important because you're manufacturing runs a lot of times. And getting that leadoff guy on only plays into what Creighton does well. They don't sit back and wait for that two-out extra base hit. They're trying to make things happen early in the inning. Peter 0 for 2, reached on a fielder's choice his last time up. Syvertson, who's been busy in left field tonight, is there to capture the first out of the sixth. And his darkness starts to settle in, that issue that we saw for an inning with the gray, tough, you know, high sky. Now, it shouldn't be a factor. The wind's going to start to die down a little bit as, as it has in this tournament later into the evening. But there's that leadoff out that Snyder is looking for. He's looking to put up a zero. Creighton's trying to get something. Every time Creighton gets a guy on, they got the tying run at the plate. So they're just trying to get people out there. Now here's Brennan Murphy. He's hitting over 500 now in his last 10 games and has had great swings tonight, doubling and scoring in the third and then had an RBI single in the fourth. That's not a nine-hole hitter approach right there. He's confident right now. He's got a good base. He's ready to hit. He's got a double and a single in RBI. He really looks comfortable at the plate right now. We'll see if they can neutralize that with something off speed. Squeezes him right in the middle of it. You know, it's tough right there. He got one strike, and I, you know, maybe he's looking to something. He saw something he could drag, but he was just trying to fight that one off himself, and it caught him more than he caught it. That ball had a chance to hit the A on his jersey if he doesn't bunt it. 
Look how the ball's in on him. He tries the button, all of a sudden he tries to eat him up. And one, when the bunt gets down, it just locks him up at home plate. He's not able to move like he normally would on a drag bunt. Snyder bounces off the mound, makes the flip to Saratella. Two outs and nobody on to face McEwen. But a right guess by Bezier and Snyder to throw that pitch. Yeah, they went in hard mark. right there. And all of a sudden, you know, maybe he felt like they were going to crowd him a little bit. He had a chance to drag the bunt with Saratella deep. But uh, the ball just ate him up, and he really was kind of defending himself more than he was trying to take a drag bunt down to first. Starts ahead of McEwen with a slider, and now this is away. McEwen has been very aggressive tonight, but he's 0 for 3. He's flown out twice and lined out to right field in the first. This is in foul territory. Saratella drifts back to fair territory, but Saratella's there. McEwen fouls out, and Creighton goes in order in the sixth. Southern Illinois, a two-run lead here in the Valley Championship game. It's the playoffs. We haven't served a single calorie all season, and we're not serving one now. If you can't handle it, go sell foam fingers in the parking lot. How many calories are you carrying? Zero! How much Pepsi taste? A lot! Now get out there and make me proud. Yeah! Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Hello, I'm Rick Navarre, president of St. Louis-based Peabody Energy. Peabody is the world's largest coal company. Coal is vital to America. It provides half the electricity in the United States. Peabody fuels electricity needs in 21 countries on six continents. And we are a global leader in clean coal solutions, providing affordable energy security and made in America economic stimulus. I invite you to visit us at PeabodyEnergy.com. The Comfort Inn sets the standard by providing exceptional accommodations and services to business and leisure travelers. Conveniently located off Highway 65, the Comfort Inn is only minutes from tourist attractions like the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame and just a 30-minute drive from the city of Branson. All rooms come with free high-speed internet access and a hot comfort sunshine breakfast buffet. Free airport transportation, a heated outdoor pool, hot tub, and an exercise room are just some of the Comfort Inn's amenities. The Comfort Inn Springfield, 3370 East Battlefield, located near the Battlefield Mall. Mitch Holt is back along with Kirk Champion in Springfield, Missouri. The Valley Championship game. Winner goes to the NCAA tournament. This call to the bullpen for Creighton brought to you by Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center where love for kids just keeps on growing. And the left-hander, Mark Winkleman, comes into the game. A junior. This is his 35th appearance and a situational move here by Ed Service. Well, one of the names they talked about was going to be in this ball game. They were going to piece this thing together. This is a junior left-hander that they really like. 86, he'll touch 90. He's got a plus changeup. He'll feature a 12 to 6 curveball when he gets a chance to get ahead of some of the hitters. But a good-looking left-hander with good size and certainly looking for uh, another zero out of that Creighton bullpen to uh, keep this thing close. And Jake Welch, the top of the order, gets things going here in the seventh for Southern Illinois. And one thing, too, they matched this up, but he's got the three left-handers coming up in one, two, and three. They wanted Sirotel to hit once again off a left-handed pitcher. This is why he's in the ballgame right here. One and one to Welch. Welch had an infield single in the third and scored a run. They like Welch a lot, champ, in this program. Just a sophomore, but they tried to... Played him some at short. They finally found a home for him at second base. But this kid looks like a prototype leadoff hitter for this program. Well, second baseman probably plays out a little better for him arm strength-wise, but what a great-looking leadoff hitter. And he and Murphy, we talked about how comfortable Murphy is looking at the plate. Breaking ball down. There's that good breaking ball deep in the count that we talked about from Winkleman. Quality breaking ball with two strikes. And Jake Welch strikes out to start the seventh. Five strikeouts tonight by Creighton pitchers. And Coach Henderson's trying to get the umpires to talk about a possible foul tip. What's difficult, though, with Welch continued to run to first base, he ran and sort of stopped like he wasn't sure if he caught the ball in midair. And then when he continued to run, I think the base umpires are going to say he swung the bat. It wasn't a foul tip. If he stays at home plate, 
you know what I mean? If the hitter stays and don't play, I fouled it. I know it's a foul ball. I don't go anywhere. But the fact that he continued to run to first makes the base umpires think that he didn't tip it. And that's a tough call because it's all sound when the ball's in the dirt. Coach Henderson doesn't agree, but I think the fact that Welch ran makes it difficult for them to go back and say that's a foul tip. Tim Camp, the home plate umpire. Wayne Harris, our first base umpire. Mike Droll at second. And Todd Olinger is the third base umpire. And Olinger is going to get the wrath of Coach Henderson. And that discussion continues. Ken Henderson, what a great story. He's been at Southern Illinois 22 years, very loyal. He was an interim coach twice. We mentioned early in the broadcast about Dan Callahan and during uh, just after his death in November of 2010, Ken was the interim coach in 2011. Had to deal with some injuries. This is a big night for Ken Henderson and his Southern Illinois program. Well, it separates himself. He becomes a real head coach here tonight because he, you know, he pushed all the right buttons on Thursday. He did a great job in the Missouri State game. And I know he was real proud of how that came, how well they played against Wichita State. He's got to stay in this ballgame now. He's got to calm down a little bit and make sure that he's around for the rest of this ballgame because he's too important. He's done a great job of these hitters, a longtime hitting coach, assistant coach, but uh, he's had a lot of responsibilities in the last few years and, and done an excellent job and got himself into this championship game. That single in the third for Harding was an infield hit. Another quality breaking ball right there from Winkleman. Good-looking left-handed pitcher right here, and he's got confidence in that breaking ball was able to throw it right there, two and one, which tells you he feels like he can command it. We're going to see it again right here. Harding just three of his last 25. You know, a hitter can't feel it, but you'll watch the catcher set up. Bimboom sits up a little higher on this 12-6 to six to try to elevate his starting point because it's so sharp that he has to make sure that he can keep the ball up enough that the hitter's going to be attracted to it. Harding fighting off a hand injury. He suffered it Wednesday in this tournament. A little low liner. Handled by the shortstop, Staley. Two gone in the seventh for the Salukis. And Siratel is going to see some of those breaking balls in this at bat now. And Saratella 0 for 3. Two ground outs and a strikeout. And his 24-game hitting streak on the line. But he got a chance to be a decent draft, doesn't he? Saratella? Yeah, yeah, he does. He's, he's put some money in his pocket this week for sure. But, uh, you know, a little disappointed he didn't get player of the year, but certainly uh, had a great year regardless. He's well recognized throughout the country. A lot of scouts have been in the seam late in the year. And another low liner. And the first baseman gets the chance this time, Judkins. Three up, three down for Southern Illinois with two low liners. But they still have a 6 4 lead going to the bottom of the seventh here. The trophy on the line in Springfield. Six four, Southern Illinois, the six seed leads the eight seed in the championship game of the Valley Tournament. For all the latest news on the State Farm Valley Baseball Championship and really all year long, you can follow America's Renaissance Conference on the official website of the Valley, NBCSports.com. They have done an amazing job this week in streaming video and keeping people up to speed on the tournament. It started here on Tuesday, and again, 
Creighton got it going when Ty Block one hit the regular season champion, Indiana State. The Southern Illinois team beat Wichita State, and now Creighton gets a leadoff double to start the seventh inning. Judkin got a pitch away, and he just went with it. Watch this ball middle away, and Judkin just stays right through it, finds a left field gap, never hesitates, makes a great turn in for a double. And now, in seven innings, champ, the Blue Jays have had their leadoff hitter on four of the seven times. Well, they continue to do it, and that's one of their formulas of the, to success in this tournament. We'll see if they can capitalize. Yes, I think he caught it with his left foot. Southern appeals that Judkins didn't touch, touch first base, but you saw that left toe get the corner of the bag. Chance Ross is up. Ross with a couple singles and an RBI. Ross, six hits in the tournament. And again, another runner in scoring position for Creighton down by two runs. They're three of 13 in that situation tonight. Good pitch from Aaron Snyder. Well, if you're Creighton, you're looking, you've got the middle of your lineup and you're trying to get a big inning, but they're certainly wanting to cut this thing down to one. If you're Southern Illinois, you're saying, you know what, leadoff double, let's try to maybe get through this six to five. We'll get deeper into our bullpen. It is Tyler Dre, the left-hander, starting to throw down in Southern Illinois' bullpen. He's one of their setup guys. Tough chance for Montgomery. He's going to have to let it roll, and it's going to kick back fair right down the line. What a great job of hitting by Chance Ross. Down 0-2 in the count. He got all knotted up on the last pitch. He just twice tries to put it in play, and look what happens here. And you know what? It's a quality pitch. That's a breaking ball down off the plate. Ross just gets a little bit of a piece of it. Montgomery did the right thing by letting it roll, but he just made some contact with two strikes, hustled all the way down, never had a chance. Tying runs at first base. Ken Henderson steps out of the dugout. They're talking about it. This is where you're going to probably see Dre in the ball game. One that can hold the runner close at first and try to handle the left-handed hitter also. And this call to the pin for Southern Illinois is brought to you by Cardinal Glenn and Children's Medical Center, where love for kids keeps on growing. Can the Southern Illinois bullpen hold a two-point or a two-run lead here for Southern Illinois? We'll see when we come back. That's Cardinals fans, we invite you to join us at home plate this season. We want thousands in Cardinals Nation to make a pledge to Homers for Health. Each time a Cardinal player hits a home run, we will all make a contribution to SSM Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center to help cure kids. Pledge forms are available at all Deerberg stores. Big dramatic walk-off home run should cost double. Centene Charitable Foundation will match your pledge to Homers for Health, powered by Peabody and you. Pledge at Glennon.org. I know a thing or two about walk-offs. Like this? Don't walk off. Southern Illinois goes to the bullpen, and Tyler Dre out there now for Ken Henderson's team, a left-hander, sophomore out of Rockford, Illinois. What do you got here, champ? Well, his numbers are a little deceiving sometimes. You see that 6 ERA, a guy that's worked 27 times. This is his 28th appearance. He's actually been very tough on left-handers, which is going to be important until they can get to maybe eaten. But right now, he's got to be thinking to himself, keep the runner close, keep the force out in order, possible double play ball. He can't try to keep the runner from first base from scoring. He just really got to try to get this hitter out and try to keep the thing maybe 6-5. But Creighton's looking to get that big inning, that timely hit that we keep talking about. And they've got four, five, six hitters coming up. We'll see what Dre does. He's been a closer. He's been tight ball games before. But he sort of flipped roles right now, a little bit earlier in the ball game, coming in with no outs here in the seventh. He was part of that sweep by Southern Illinois over the Blue Jays in April, that third weekend of April. He had the win in relief over Creighton. And he has been good in this tournament. He went one and the third Wednesday against Bradley in that 98 extra inning win. And then he had a big inning and a third against Missouri State in that game you mentioned Thursday night when they won 3-2 here with the hometown Missouri State Bears. Well, he's been a big factor in this tournament late in the year. And he's, he was talked about in, in this role somewhere along the way he was going to be in this ball game. Maybe not necessarily where he wants to be with runners on first and second and nobody out, but he's an important part. His job is to get this left-handed hitter. And then we'll see what shakes out after that. Ben Boone has two hits in the game. Single in the second and single in the fifth. And a fly towards short left. Let's see if they're going to send the runner at third. 
and he'll throw to second. So Creighton gets hit within a run on a sacrifice fly and a first pitch swing by Anthony Benboom. Second RBI for Benboom, and Creighton is within a digit. Yeah, once you saw Syverson set his feet, Ross hustled back right there as a possible tag, trying to get himself in scoring position. Dre got the left-hander. He's a runner, tags the third, gets back, gets the read. But Syverson right away just looks to go to second. He's going to keep the force out in order. He doesn't look home. He comes and throws to second base, keeps that force out in order. Well channels the ball right there. Tying runs at first. A gapper is going to tie it. A double play ball is going to get Southern Illinois out of the inning. And they keep Dre out there with the right-handed hitter. Thornburg has struggled tonight. Well, he's got to he's got to get. I don't think they're going to get into their closer situation yet. He's not up throwing. I think they've got to get enough out of uh, Dre right here, and he's going to be able to keep that runner close. I don't know that Ed will start the runner, but he's not afraid to. He started him once before against the left-hander in Forsyth. And Thornburg looks ahead, two balls and no strikes. Thornburg. 0 for 3 tonight, champ. He fouled out trying to bunt his first time up, struck out looking and grounded out to short his last time. It looks like Ed put the hold on right there with Ross. He's going to maybe take a pitch here and make sure it's a pitch in a perfect spot if he chooses to swing. Ross again with 14 stolen bases. But Dre now struggling to find it to this hitter. Well, it does, and now he's going to come in 3-0. I'm not sure if he's going to turn him loose in the green light. I don't know their ball club that well, but even at 3-1, you may see him start that runner because Ed does an aggressive uh, style of baseball, and I'm, I'm not too sure that he wouldn't start Ross 3-1. We'll see what Thornburg does here, 3-0. Taken all the way. Now at 3-1, do you start him? Well, I, it looks like he possibly put a hold on, too. He looked right at the first one. There are a couple signs. There's a couple ways you can freeze your runner. I'm not sure if 3-1's an automatic run in this situation. And Dre takes a long look over there, and he comes back with a second strike to Thornburg. Two yeah, good pitches he, back there. lean back. back on the leg kick now. We'll see if he starts in. I won't be surprised if he starts in 3-2. Even down a run, I think that's just their style. That's how they play. They're going to try to force contact and stay out of the double play. He's just got to make sure on the throw over right here, if P.J. Finnegan wants him to throw over, we'll see if he can catch him leaning. Pitches away, ball four. So Creighton with one out. Now has the tying run at second base and the go-ahead run at first. Yeah, the steal not really a factor right there. Yeah. Looks like Murphy warming up in the Saluki bullpen. P.J. Finnegan, the pitching coach, comes out to try to settle the situation down a little bit for Dre. Creighton's got the lead run at first base. Pitch. You know, it's, it's a weird game. This whole thing is sort of lean towards the Saluki dugout, but Creighton does what they do. They keep fighting, keeping the game close, doing those little things. Well, they, get a, they get a fly ball double, champ. Okay, that's huge to get him back in the game. Yeah. But then they get the – Ross does a great job of putting the ball in play. It looks like the ball is going to roll foul. Mm -hmm. Then this takes his 45-degree turn and stays fair. But this is kind of what Creighton has been doing. This is what they did last year to win the league and win the tournament. And they beat Georgia in the Corvallis Regional. So they represented the league well in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, tight ball. This is game seven. This is the little things. This is a two-inning game right here. So – Southern Illinois is just looking for the double play ball, and Creighton's going to continue to put the ball in play and try to put pressure on him. He started, chose to start the runner against a left-hander in a 3-2 pitch. It was ball four. If it would have been a strike, it looked like he could have thrown him out. But it worked in, worked in Creighton's behalf. Gerber's had three good swings. Yeah, he's really looking good at the plate, too. We talked about a couple hitters right here, but this guy has really been comfortable to play. Only a 237 hitter, but certainly doesn't look that way now. Two for three with a couple singles and a run scored in the night's ball game. And nails in this tournament. And then his out was a warning track shot to deep to left field. Chased a breaking ball there. Dushinsky chooses to, to keep that runner close, even with the left-handed hitter. I'm not sure he'll run these two guys in this situation. Gerber's swinging the bat pretty well at the plate. But that takes you out of a double play situation just a little bit. If you keep continuing holding, you still got to get back to double play depth. Gerber's going to be tough with his foot speed to double up anyway. But they got to be careful. They don't leave that 5-6 hole too wide open. 
Gerber reaches out and will tie the game. The throw comes to third base, safe at third, and the runner moving up to second. And the Blue Jays tie the game at 6-6 with a piece of clutch hitting by Mike Gerber. He's got a breaking ball that he went in the other way. Syverson had a chance to throw the runner at third base. When you take that risk, you allow the batter runner to move up. It's a bang-bang play at third. Looks just like he just got underneath the throw. Ken Henderson talks to Wayne Herrick on the bang-bang call. It looks like he got underneath the tag, though. But more importantly, Gerber hustled into second base, takes the force out away. And Creighton's got a chance to take their first lead here in the bottom of the seventh. Runners at second and third and just one out. And Alex Staley, the shortstop, at the plate. And Creighton a long way from being done here with just one out. 11 hits for the Blue Jays. They have struggled all year offensively. Again, that 8-1 win over Nebraska kind of got them going in early May. We'll talk about how they have turned it around in this tournament when we come back because Southern Illinois making a call to the bullpen. And it's brought to you by Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center where our love for kids just keeps on growing. A 6-6 tie here in the bottom of the seventh inning in the Valley Championship game. Creighton trying to become the first eight seed to ever win the tournament. And Murphy coming out of the bullpen for Southern Illinois. Matt Murphy, a sophomore from Grays Lake, Illinois. But I was talking about Creighton's drastic change in this tournament. Six of the last seven times they've had, the uh, last seven games they've had double digit hits. They've only done it 20 in 54 games. Every game so far, champ, they've had double digit hits in this tournament. And they've done a great job. They've got guys in scoring. They, you know, like you talked about, they're getting their leadoff guys on, but then they're capitalizing. They're putting pressure by starting runners. They're opening up some holes. You look at the ball that Ross fought off with two strikes. You know, they started the runner, the ball was up, but they put pressure on the defense. And they're just doing a lot of the little things that they have to do to continue to keep themselves in the ball game. Now they've got themselves in a position to take the lead with just one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Now Ken Henderson and P.J. Finnegan have one of the better throwers in the league in their bullpen in Todd Eaton. He's been sterling throughout this tournament. But now they've got Matt Murphy trying to get them. Let's take a look here. This is the third base umpire, Wayne Herrick. And they were arguing with him on the last at bat. But... Big time here for Murphy now for Southern Illinois. They've got to try to get to Todd Eaton somehow. And it's tough. And this is a sinker ball guy. He's going to put something around. Southern's going to have to bring the infield in just a little bit and try to cut down, run down at the plate. It's tough with runners on second and third to do that, but they're not in position right now with just two more at bats to allow Creighton to pick up this run if they can avoid it. Slow roller, Southern Illinois with the infield in. And Dushinsky throws out Alex Staley, who was first pitch swinging. Did a nice job. Dushinsky stayed under control right there. Infield was in. He threw that sinker in on his hands. Got the early in the count ground ball. And Southern's got a chance to get out of this at 6-6. Creighton, once again, looking for that timely hit with a chance to take a two-run lead because Ed is not going to stop the runner now. Gerber's coming, believe me, on a base hit, regardless of where it's at. Southern has shortened up a little bit in left field and center field, still deep and right. And here's the freshman, Jake Peter. Reached once on a fielder's choice. But he lined out to left field and flew out to the same position in his other two plate appearances. Montgomery's got to protect a little bit against the bunt right here. They may try to scrap their way into a run. A How about out. a liner to take the lead? The freshman, a clutch, two out, two run single, and the Blue Jays of Creighton have come all the way back to take an 8-6 to six lead in the bottom of the seventh. He was first pitch hunting. He was hunting a fastball. He got a ball up a little bit. It looked like a sinker. It stayed up. Two-seam fastball. And that was down a little bit. Went down and got it. Drove it right back through the middle. Two out, two run RBI. 
And Creighton's book on Murphy was interesting because both Staley and Peter were very aggressive against him. Yeah, he's a guy that's going to be around the plate. He's not overpowering, but he's got a real good sinker, and most of the time he's going to keep it on the ground. You saw the ground ball with the infield in, but that one just stayed up long enough. He's able to drive it back through the middle. Jake Peter with a big base hit to put Creighton up, a four-run, multiple-run inning to give Creighton the 8-6 lead. And a great job by Saratella to snare the hot smash, the liner by Murphy. But Creighton gets a four-run seventh, and the Blue Jays take the lead, 8-6, going to the eighth. Thanks for the ticket, man. Thanks to my State Farm agent for saving me 480 bucks. No sweat. Hey, look, we're on fan cam. Y'all ready for this? Having the extra cash sure helps. And I can save even more by combining your auto and renter's policies. Cool. But what if we bought a house? Auto and home? We have even bigger savings for that. Wow, sounds good. More savings any way you shake it. Want to spit some nachos? Sure. Get to a better state. State Farm. Northern China reduce its reliance on coal-fired heating plants and prevents 60 million tons of CO2 emissions? When Emerson takes up the challenge, it's never been done before, simply becomes consider it solved. Emerson. Hey Skip, is that a new glove? No, nah, this is an infield glove. Smaller basket, easy transfers. And this, this one's for cookies. Car wash, jousting, road work, falconing, story time, and this one jotties. Catch great kids promos all weekend long at Ritz kickoff to summer weekend, June 8th through the 10th against the Indians. The Creighton Blue Jays, led by Nick Judkins, our first baseman. A four run seventh. And our call to the bullpen for Creighton is brought to you by Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center, where our love for kids just keeps on growing. And now they go to another veteran, Reese McGraw. A sidearm right-hander, four and six on the year. He's picked up four saves, but uh, he's done a nice job. He's got 30, I'm sorry, he's got uh, 36 strikeouts in 41 innings. Sidearm right-hander, sweeping, breaking ball to these right-hand. He'll show you a little bit of a change up to the lefties. Once again, Southern Illinois first pitch hacking. Down two, they're looking to get a runner on, get back to the uh, heart of their lineup. Syverson came in with a slump, but you see he's two for three. Had the solo home run to get Southern going early in the game. And came back with an infield single and scored a run in the third. McGraw, though, has been around the block. His first win of his Valley career last year against Southern Illinois. Came in as a junior college transfer at a Garden City in the Jayhawk League and works ahead of Jordan Syverson. Rode the fastball up right there. Syverson looking to pull. He's just got to work to get on base. You're going to see that sweeping slider here. Yes, it is. How tough is that, that slider coming down from that arm slot for a right-handed well, hitter? Well, if you see it, it's, it's kind of, a, it's obviously a tough angle, but it's going to travel. It's a little bit flat. Almost looks like it comes up on you. But it's, it, you take it off the right edge. It's tough on right-hand hitters because you've got to respect it. It could be a fastball in. And that front hip goes just a little bit, and it's tough to make, get a piece of the sweeping slider on the outer half. Austin Montgomery won for three with a run scored. He had one of those four infield hits that Southern had in the third inning. But they were able to get a three-run inning. Just off the edge with the fastball. It is just astonishing how Creighton, who could not hit a lick, a 4-14 and 14 span during the middle of the season. They were just 2-10 and 10 in the first 12 Valley games. And in this tournament, getting clutch hit after hit after hit. Well, and like you said, they get guys on base that put pressure on the defense. But, uh, you know, hitting's contagious. These guys all feel like up and down the lineup that they can swing the bat right now. You're seeing the bottom of the lineup really swing the bat well for them. And all of a sudden, you get back to the top. The guys that are confident because they're hitting higher in the lineup, you know they feel good about themselves. But Southern Illinois has got to get some base runners. Reese McGraw has just got to keep throwing that sweeper and see if he can make it tough on his right-hand hitters. A big cut and a miss from Austin Montgomery. 
You know, and the game plan for Creighton is working out right now. They're able to get Winkleman in the game to face those left-handers. Now the tough sidearm right-hander to get through these right-handed hitters. And Syverston, Montgomery, Bezier on deck. Bezier a couple doubles, but he's got to see a, a tough sidearm right-hander here in the eighth. Montgomery, good tough hitter from Marion, Illinois, just outside of Carbondale. Second in the Valley in hits. He lines this one foul. Third in the Valley in RBI. And all Valley first team selection is utility player. They finally stuck him at third and said, just go for it. His bat was too good. They yeah. The way he swing the bat, he's got to be in this lineup. There's no question of that. But Austin Montgomery, a 329 with seven homers and 55 RBIs. He's, you know, he's got three whole numbers. And he sort of protects Cyberson a little bit. He's going to buy him some pitches along the way. So good, strong looking hitter. We'll see if McGraw wants to go to that 3-2 slider here. You don't want to walk a guy to give the time around at the plate, but you also, if that's your money pitch, you got to go to it. Chose to go to the fastball. Montgomery did a nice job taking it right over the second baseman's head. And that's tough because when you get a sweeping slider like that, it's tough because you're not quite sure. He hasn't really got a called strike on it. You know, he's just shown it that it's a, a tough pitch. But this was a fastball, middle of the plate, little two-seam sinker that stayed up. Montgomery stayed right with it, hit it into the gap. Southern Illinois now has a tying run at the plate. Creating a sound defensive club, looking for that ground ball from the sideline pitcher to turn that key double play and get him out of the eighth inning. Saluki catcher Brian Bager has been outstanding tonight. Two doubles with a run scored. And pounding out six extra base hits in this tournament. Had a sack fly to beat Missouri State Thursday in the top of the tenth. And Southern needs him here, representing the tying run at the plate, down eight to six. Top of eight. Looks like Spomer down there getting a little bit ready. Can't quite tell from our angle, but I believe that's who it is. Well, it's been a peculiar year for Creighton in their bullpen. There's no real strong closer like Eaton for Southern Illinois. In fact, they only have six saves as a team. Great pitch there on Bajor. You know, but what we know about Ed Service <laughs> and Rob, you know, they're... They had a plan. They left the hotel with a plan, and they're just trying to get the right matchups and see if things play out, keep the game close, do the little things right. It's working out for Creighton right now. There's that sweeping breaking ball just off the edge. You can throw that out there one and two. It's tough to throw a three-two because you've got to catch some of the plate. We're back in even count. Don't think Hindu's going to start him right here. It is Spolmer warming up the right-hander. Bajor able to lay off the last pitch. Even count fastball right there. Bajor again a career 300 hitter. Wind blows out to left. Creighton playing deep and left. Shallow in center. Sort of a no doubles looking right field too. Runner stays put. Line to center. Couple steps in by the center fielder Gerber, but he recovers and there's two outs in the inning. Now, talked about the outfielder's depth right there. But Gerber's got the ability to go back. He did a real nice job. Right, He can play shallow because he got a great read right there. He sits inside those two out corner outfielders a little bit. He did a nice job going back on the ball. In the last couple of years, people have talked about Creighton's infield being infield defense so good. But we have seen also the last couple of years that the athleticism of Creighton's outfielders. Well, you go get athletes is what they try to recruit. they got a big ballpark to cover in Omaha now. So you're going to have to recruit that type of athlete to play the outfield in that big ballpark. This is a decent-sized ballpark, 400 to center, 330 down the right field line. Just 315 right in the left field corner, but a pretty standard-sized ballpark. Donnie Deshinsky up now for Southern. 1-1 one, one count with yeah, two outs. 265 hitter, but does have six home runs. The wind continues to blow out the left just a little bit. If he can get a pitch to elevate, he could possibly tie it. He's single in the second. He's got a couple sweeping sliders to deal with left in this at bat. Southern has been so resilient all year. Let's see if McGraw can keep this one on the edge enough. Cut some of the plate. Kaczynski was able to foul it off. Oh, 
it's tough because you just don't see that angle of a breaking ball that often. That's why these sidearm guys sometimes can really be effective in one inning stints. Fastball there. You're moving him back and forth with the fastball, then the soft stuff, but then you also have to deal with the, the slider that's breaking away. You mentioned Ashinsky's pop. Two homers, five RBI in the last four. He nearly hit for the cycle in that tournament opening win over Wichita State. Runs a two-seamer in on his hands. Well, he's wasting everything that McGraw is putting up there right now. Well, I think right there, if you're going to get a, you're either going to get a foul. Well, I don't think he can keep that ball fair, which he didn't. But he's trying to set that sweeper up again, one and two. He ran the two-seamer in on his hands. Then boom, got in off the plate a little bit. Dushinsky's got to swing the bat. Now he's going to see that slider, it looks like. And he caught the outside corner. Dushinsky tricked, and that ends the eighth. Saluki's leave one on, and Creighton leads 8-6. Going to the bottom of the eighth. They're two of a kind, and just like toddlers, puppies need food made for them. That's why there's Purina Puppy Chow. With all the essential nutrients your growing puppy needs, Purina Puppy Chow. Slew Care Sports Medicine at St. Louis University Hospital has a tip for your weekend races. Pay attention to your feet. When preparing for exercise, never wear new shoes on race day. Dress appropriately for the weather. Running affects your back, muscles, legs, neck, and feet. If you receive an injury during work or play, contact our comprehensive rehabilitation services to get you back in the game. To schedule an appointment at our Midtown or West County offices, call 314-977-4440 or visit slewhospital.com. Cardinals fans, we invite you to join us at Home Plate this season. We want thousands in Cardinals Nation to make a pledge to Homers for Health. Each time a Cardinal player hits a home run, we will all make a contribution to SSM Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center to help cure kids. Pledge forms are available at all Deerberg stores. Big dramatic walk-off home run should cost double. Centene Charitable Foundation will match your pledge to Homers for Health, powered by Peabody and you. Pledge at Glennon.org. I know a thing or two about walk-offs. Like this? Don't walk off. Who could resist the call of America's number one puppy food brand? With DHA and essential nutrients also found in mother's milk. Purina Puppy Chow. Eight to six, Creighton. They have come from behind from a big deficit. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Cardinal Glennon's Children's Medical Center, where love for kids keeps on growing. Four games for Southern in this tournament, champ. The fourth appearance in this tournament by Todd Eaton, one of the better closers in the league. Yeah, I got the lecture of the day off yesterday, but this is a guy that's worked a ton in this tournament. He comes in the eighth inning, even though he's the closer. They're down two. They've got to keep this thing right here. 27 appearances now. He's got nine saves, 3-0 with a 229 ERA. And Southern wouldn't be in this game without Todd Eaton. As McEwen, chopper, quick play, and wide on the throw. We'll see how they rule it. Moving into second base is McEwen. And this has been an issue for Southern all year. As Montgomery charges, makes a pretty good play setting up on it in a wild throw and error on Montgomery. And the ball kicked to his bare hand side just a little bit, right when it hit the edge of the grass. And he kind of lost his feet a little bit and made a wide throw. And I think they've charged him with a two base error. And the second air of the night on Southern Illinois. Got to think they're going to bunt right here. Ed's going to try to get that third run. And Let's tough see. for Todd Eaton. He made a good pitch there to you get the what? chopper toward Montgomery. Will he go off the board to let Judkin swing? He's swinging the bat pretty well. Let's see if he can get something to pull. Or does he go ahead and bunt the runner to third base and let the middle of his lineup try to drive him in? Bunt and Judkins Judkin gets it down. The only play is going to be at first. And if you play for Creighton, I don't care if you're one through nine, you got to be able to bunt for this club. Well, and he moves the runner up. That's how he chooses to do it. That's his style. That's his game. He understands his defense. He understands his bullpen. He wants that third run. Forces Southern Illinois now to bring the infield in against the three-hole hitter from Creighton. Possible going to talk about do they walk this guy or set up the double play. P.J. Finnegan's out to talk about it, how they're choosing to pitch him. And Ross has had three straight hits. But let me let me talk. I want to ask you about Eaton because he wouldn't be here without him. He goes two innings and gets a save against Wichita State on Tuesday. He comes back the next day, two and two-thirds, wins the game in that 9-8 extra inning game against Bradley. Comes back on Thursday, two and a third, 
wins the game in extra innings against Missouri State. Yeah, he's been in all the pressure situations that Southern has been in, but he's resilient. They talked about he was going to be available for one, maybe two. He's in this game right now because there's no reason to be here in the bottom of the ninth until they tie this thing up, and Creighton's got a chance right here to go up three. Misses away with Chance Ross. Is this one where you're trying to get Ross to maybe chase something here? You pitch to him, but you don't really pitch to him? Well, you pitch to him smart. I think you pitch him off the edge. And one thing about two, and even though he's a three-hole hitter with, you know, 30 RBIs, is there a possible squeeze somewhere in this at-bat? Big play by Eaton. A chance for a double play by Montgomery. Drops the ball. and not so sure went back there anyway, but a great play by Eaton. Yeah, he was out of third base, I think, if he catches it. The ball right back through the middle. Line drive, great job. He finds it in his glove, turns and makes the throw. Third base umpire ready to ring him up. Montgomery just can't get the handle. Goodness, that would have been huge. Got to get the left-hander now to finish the inning off here and save the uh, run. And Ben Boom takes a strike from Eaton. Ben Boom and a couple RBI. Sacrifice flies last time up. He's had two hits. Creighton's entire order has been active. Not only tonight, they've been active this whole tournament. One through nine. Welch sets up on it, and Southern Illinois gets out of it. The Salukis go to the ninth with a chance. Down eight to six, can Creighton close out the Salukis? Where can you get the best milk? From Tom, from Russ, from Laura, and Maggie. It comes from all of us. We're Prairie Farms, and we don't just work for the dairy, we are the dairy. Making sure the dairy products in your child's school, in your stores, and on your table are fresh and healthy. Handled with the kind of care that your family deserves. We are Prairie Farms Dairy. Ask for us, the farmer-owned dairy. They sacrifice. They protect. They answer the call at all times. They are the men and women of our armed forces, and their will, heart, dedication, and service to the country that we call home is nothing less than extraordinary. Return the favor. Text the word RETURN to 90999 now for your $10 donation, or simply visit returnthefavor.org. Please join us in returning the favor. Back in Springfield, Missouri Valley Conference Championship. Creighton leading 8-6. to six. We go to the top of the ninth. And let's take a look at tonight's call of the game presented by Emerson, the global technology and engineering company. To learn more, visit Emerson.com. Emerson, consider it solved. Champ, what about the Creighton bullpen? Well, five innings of relief so far. Just four hits, two runs, and six strikeouts. They put themselves in a position to win the baseball game. They've gone to Kurt Spomer right here to finish this thing off. Looks like Southern's going to try to counter with a pinch hitter. And the call to the bullpen brought to you by Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center, where love for kids just keeps on growing. Again, this is a bit of an atypical Creighton bullpen. There's no eating for these guys. Spomer, though, is a veteran. What about him trying to close out this game? Well, you bring him in. He's got 30. This is his 32nd appearance, 3-1 three and one with a 3-7-3. Three, three. He's a power sinker guy. He can pitch in the upper 80s. He's not afraid. He's going to work fast and be aggressive in the zone. In turn, Southern Illinois is trying to get the bottom of the lineup up, so all of a sudden, maybe that Ciratello guy comes up one more time. And Derek Trevelyan will hit for Tanner Renner. Trevelyan, a right-handed hitter. He has pinch hit in five of the last seven Saluki games and is four for seven in that stretch. He's got an RBI and two for four in the tournament. So Trevelyan, a junior, college transfer from John A. Logan. 
facing Spomer. And Spomer is a veteran. Last year, champ, he had 13 saves. So he was used to the closing role, but only two saves this year. Well, that's what the thought. He's been there before. It doesn't matter if it's a year ago or not. He's not afraid right now. He's attacking the zone. Trevelyan's down one and two right now. We're going to see what type of breaking ball he's got to try to put him away. The one, two, and he strikes out Trevelyan. Went to the slider off the edge a little bit, one and two. A little surprise right there. Maybe Trevelyan wasn't going to look at a strike. He chased the ball up 0 -0, or 1 and 0. But Southern style is let it rip and, and you know, get guys on base by swinging the bat, not by taking pitches. And here's the nine hole, Ronnie Traggio. Rennie Traggio. It was 0 for 1. He struck out on the second, a couple sacrifice bunts. Traggio was the victim of that fly ball double earlier in the game when he lost in the lights. The ball landed just a couple feet to his left. Even count Trajo just doing what he can to get on base. Get back to the top of that order. Spomer tries to heat that one up and misses high. Yeah, kind of rushed all the way through his delivery right there. He's in a hurry to get the ball out of his hand. Elevated, now the count's 2-1. Trajo's got to be patient, make him bring the ball down to the zone. This lifted towards right. It hangs up there, and making the long run is Murphy. The right fielder, and Southern is down to its last out. And it'll be Jake Welch. Welch doing nothing right here other than trying to get on base in any way he can. Spomer, an interesting story. He's a small school Iowa kid. Honey Creek, Iowa went to Tri-Center High School. It's not very far from Omaha on the western Iowa border. He was one of the top pitchers for his high school when he was an eighth grader. He was actually a five-year letterman in high school. <laughs> he had the best stuff as an eighth grader, so move him up to the varsity. And what a story unfolding here. Crate leading eight to six. They were down big early in this game. Slapped on the ground to third. This could be it. The throw to first. Creighton has won the Valley Championship as an eight seed. The first time an eight seed has ever won this tournament. And it's the first time a non-Wichita State team has won back-to-back -back in this tournament since the mid-90s when Missouri State did it. It is the 10th NCAA appearance for the Creighton Blue Jays. It'll be the fourth with Ed Service. What an incredible story by Creighton. You continue to do the little things right. You give yourself, keep the game close, keep the game close. They did. They got that big hit we talked about. And Creighton advances the NCAA tournament. Excellent job by Ed Service and his staff. He pieced the bullpen together, did a great job of, of, of putting those zeros up and six straight innings out of their bullpen. Creighton Blue Jays win the Valley. And their bullpen, outstanding. Chase Webb hands to Mark Winkleman, handles to McGraw, they hand to Spomer, and the Blue Jays are going to the NCAA tournament with the losing record. 26 and 28, the Blue Jays have the trophy. We'll be back to Springfield after this.
Tonight's State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Baseball Championship is brought to you by State Farm for auto home life and banking. Get to a better state. By Casey's General Stores, a convenience store and a whole lot more. By the farmer-owned Prairie Farms family of dairies. Prairie Farms, Highland and Roberts Dairies. Farm fresh quality from our family to yours. And by Coventry Healthcare. Mitch Holtz is back with Kirk Champion. An incredible story here. The Creighton Blue Jays, the eighth seed, eighth place, last place in the regular season, have won back-to-back -back Valley Tournament Championships. And let's go to tonight's play of the game, a presentation of Rawlings, the official baseball of the Missouri Valley Conference, and the NCAA Championship. Champions choose Rawlings. Big base hit by Jake Peter, drove in the lead runs. And uh, even though he's down bottom lineup, he did a nice job right there. Big base hit. That put Creighton on top for good. They win the ball game 8-6. And clutch hitting throughout the tournament and throughout this game. Again, one through nine, Peter in the eight hole. But you can also look at Gerber, had a huge game in a huge tournament. Chance Ross uh, had three hits in this game. Judkins had great swings for this team, and a credit to Ed Service and his whole coaching staff. He kept the boat in the water. These guys could have died in the middle of April and gone away, but they said, we're going to point to Springfield. Not only do they point, they take the trophy. Well, up and down the lineup, they do the little things. They got the big hit out of the eight hole. They pieced together their bullpen, just like we talked about. When they left the hotel, this is what we have to do to have a chance to win, and they were able to put themselves in position when they executed their bullpen six great innings out of their pin and Creighton advances and much like last year champ they went to the Corvallis Regional they beat Georgia in the first game two to one Ty Block now gets a week he's going to get rested tonight he was pitching on short rest even though they come in with a losing record, when you face this club, you're going to have to play good baseball to beat them. Well, Creighton catches the baseball. They're not going to give you, they're not going to extend innings very often, so they do such a good job defensively. They're doing a lot of the little things right now, I mean, getting the bunts down, making some contact with men in scoring position, getting those leadoff guys on. That's a formula that gets you into postseason, and that's a formula that gets you a chance to win a game or two in the postseason also. What a week. An unforgettable week for the Creighton Blue Jays. And it started by beating the number one seed on Tuesday, and it didn't stop until this moment. The dog pile at the mound. Creighton's going to the NCAA tournament. One of the best things about State Farm is our accessibility. Oh, yeah? You can call us 24-7, get quotes online, start a claim with our smartphone app. You name it, we're here anytime, anywhere. Any way you want it. That's the way I need it. Any way you want it. All night. All night. Every night. Any way you want it. That's the way I need it. We just had ourselves a little journey moment there. Yep. Saw him in 83 in Fresno. Place was crawling with chicks. I gotta go. Any way you want it, it's the way you need it. Any way you want it. We use the new Raleigh's bat with the BB Core standard. It's the bat that the players want to use. They gotta have the great balance. They gotta have the feel, the handle. The grip, the performance of the bat, and how far they can hit a ball, and how hard they can hit a ball. And Rawlings has hit the mark in all those areas. The players felt that Rawlings was a, a step ahead of the class. Rawlings made a commitment to get their aluminum bat at the top of the charts in college baseball, and uh, that's where they are right now.